The views and opinions expressed by tonight's guest and topic of discussion do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of Spaced Out Radio. Spaced Out Weekend, Spaced Out Radio Limited, its hosts, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with this broadcast. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of this broadcast or podcast without the express written consent of Spaced Out Radio Spaced Out Weekend or Spaced Out Radio Limited is strictly prohibited. Listener discretion is advised. Hi there, this is Dave Scott, and I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at spacedoutradio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. on the East Coast, Mother's Day, or the day after Mother's Day. We are coming to you live from the Magic Bus, I I mean cabin, Uncle Jimbo's cabin, sharing multitudinous interdimensional space and time simultaneously between the Pacific Northwest and Desert Southwest, as it does every weekend here on spacedoutradio.com. We want to welcome in everyone listening on WQEE 99 Rock the Key in Noonan, Georgia, at spacedoutradio.com on Spreaker, on the United Public Radio Network, Renegade Talk Radio, and High Plains Radio, High Plains Talk Radio Network. Thank you for being here, guys. We also want to thank guitar god Run Bumblefoot Saul, formerly of Guns N' Roses, currently of Art of Anarchy. He creates the music that makes Spaced Out Radio Weekend Rock, the official spacedoutradio.com music. Hey, if you love to be online, chatting, Facebooking, Twittering, Please check us out on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like at Spaced Out Radio Show. On Facebook, you can follow me at Cosmic Passport with Elizabeth Anglin or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. Tune us in on TuneIn, download our show, just sign into one of our chat rooms on Spreaker or on the chat room on Facebook at the SOR Space Travelers Club. If you head to our website, spacedoutradio.com, for just five bucks a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. We offer some pretty decent swag, and we feel good about it because it's our opportunity to give back to you, our valued listener. We have a new section called The Encounter. Yeah, The Encounter with Very Furry Men. I mean, that deals with everything paranormal courtesy of our editors, Very Furry Men, Eric Markham and Everett Themer. You can check out Dave Scott, another Very Furry Man, and his latest blog there as well. And if you have had an experience you can't explain with, for example, a very furry man, fill out an SOR Sightlines report. Our researcher, Mike Schmidt, is ready to find out what's going on. I am so happy to welcome into the Cosmic Passport studio tonight into, uh, you know, Uncle Jimbo's cabin, that wild and magical place where we are right now, my good friend, Lisha Berry, I met her when she left on the beginning of this journey that she's going to talk about tonight, I Am Her Daughter, The Healing Path to a Woman's Power. I met her in New Mexico a decade ago, or a little over a decade ago when she came through, and it just seemed that we were supposed to meet, and we did, and I'm so happy to have her on the show tonight, but we're going to be talking about a little bit about her book, I Am Her Daughter, the Healing Path to a Woman's Power, which is a fantastic subject for Mother's Day tonight. And it doesn't matter if you're male or female. You can, you can call this I Am Her Son um, and, and read the book and enjoy it as well. I got so much just out of the foreword, which was not written by Leisha. It was written by Gail Dixon. But I'm going to read a little bit of the foreword to you because it's so perfect for those of us who are on the healing path and those of us who are 
considering uh, being on the healer's path and those of us who are still healing. And for me, it's, it's the layers of the onion. I'm always unpeeling a new layer. But this is what Gail Dixon says about this book and about healing and, the, and uh, you know, what we need to know. We are all broken and in need of healing. In our brokenness, we live only partial lives, always falling short of the full expression of the power and potential that Source has placed in us. Though each of us is unique in the small details of how we are wounded and how those wounds play out in our lives, we have much in common regarding the nature of those wounds and therefore in the path we might take toward healing. This book is a tale of one woman's experience and every woman's journey on that healing path. It contains profound and powerful wisdom, deep reassurance, and vibrant hope. At its very core, this book is a prayer. For many of us, especially women, the first wound, the mother wound, is the one that shapes our lives. It is a wound of every part of our being, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and it must be healed at all of these levels. It is a wound so profound that its healing can only be accomplished through the divine healer, the divine mother. If you are a woman or if you love a woman in today's world, much of your life has been defined by the archetype of the Divine Mother as woman perfected. Ancient societies envisioned gods and goddesses who each served as an archetype or crowning example of a human characteristic. The Mother archetype is the stuff of myth and legend, the center of many religious traditions, a major thread in our social fabric, and the topic of more therapy sessions than most of us can imagine. Leisha Berry, thank you for writing this book. Thank you for being on our show. How are you this evening? I'm so happy you're here. What oh, do you, what's you. the good oh, word? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Um, thank you for writing this book. As I'm reading it, it's uh, I'm actually just getting so healed by hearing the beginning of your story with your husband, Peter, that you recognized each other and then in the process of trying to find your dreams together, you, you began to lose each other. Um, that is actually um, something I needed to read today, so I want to thank you for writing about it in the first chapter. Um, and if, if for people who don't know Leisha, I know Leisha, so I'm going to have to back up and, and tell the story. You decided to leave everything in two, 2003, 2004, and get in a motorhome and drive across the country. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, um, the, the big family adventure. We were living in Asheville, North Carolina at the time, and um, my husband and I and our two sons, uh, young sons at that point, and we were doing the American dream life. You know, we had the um, the pretty white farmhouse up on the hill surrounded by oak trees, and I had my organic mini farm and orchard and herb gardens and flower gardens and I drove a Volvo station wagon and I was the PTO president for the kids' school and Peter had a, a nice job with um, a major corporation that I can't name and um, everything looked real good from the outside and, you know, everybody thought we were living like this awesome, you know, American dream life but we had, um, we I, I felt... I felt that something was changing and something something was, that we were growing apart. There was a gap, you know, between Peter and I and our sons who were six and nine at the time um, were very close with me. You know, me and the two boys were kind of like a tricycle and we just got on great and, and everything was super duper during the week. And then Peter would come home from work at night after being at work for 12, you know, some odd hours and he just wanted to be alone, um, he got irritated with the boys, um, just, you know, making noise at dinner, you know, he just would get up in disgust and, and leave and go eat in the other room, and, and on the weekends, you know, he was so busy on the house because it was an old historic home and we needed to do lots of renovations, and so the, basically the boys didn't know their dad, and Peter was playing out, you know, a father wound um, that he had... Uh, 
experience, you know, with his own dad and was playing it out with our boys. And I was watching all this happen and just feeling like this powerlessness, you know, because it is so important to me for my kids to be raised in a loving way. And um, having come from abuse myself as a kid, I just, you know, I'd worked so hard to to make a good environment for our children to grow up as, as little harm as possible. So it was really not okay with me. And so I said to him one night to um, to Pete, you know, this is what I'm seeing, and I'm, I'm worried that if we don't do something quickly, that we are going to lose each other. And he mm-hmm. was he was blown away. Um, he calls it the spiritual dynamite conversation. He said, you know, at first he was mad because he's like, well, what do you mean? I'm doing all this for our family. You know, I'm working all this, you know, working this job, and but essentially what I helped him to see was that he was becoming different. He was changing. He was becoming um, kind of a robot of this corporation that he was working for. And he was he was just losing us. So he came around and um, by, by the end of that night, we decided we were going to wake up early in the morning every morning and meditate before he went to work and get quiet and listen for answers because we needed answers about how to save our family and our marriage. And over a period of several weeks, um, we understood that we needed to just start letting go of some things. And it started easy at first, like letting go of all the volunteer time I was doing in the kids' school or um, letting go of some tasks around the house. But then eventually it got to bigger letting go, like leaving my energy work practice and him leaving his job and us leaving our home and leaving Asheville. And, And, you know, we did it little by little so that it was manageable, but um, it was it was pretty drastic. We sold our home and most of our possessions and bought a used RV and hit the road in December of 2003 and traveled the country for seven years um, and in a spiritual odyssey where we really got to um, learn how to be different with each other in a very much uh, Aquarian um, way, much more, you know, partnership, respect, um, more of an egalitarian um, sort of model. Um, and we we learned so, so much about relationships. And as a result of that, a tremendous body of work, you know, came through us. And um, we now teach that. And I Am Her Daughter, the book, is my journey during that time of healing my mother wound, which was the the, the big work for me at that time that needed to be done so that I could start really showing up, you know, for myself and for our kids and in my marriage um, to be able to really be present and and whole, you know, um, because our, our mother relationship, of course, is our most primary relationship. And if things are not good there, uh, it really shakes our very core, you know, our very foundation, um, and women who have had difficult relationships with their mothers or perhaps have even been abused by their mothers tend to walk in the world with some very specific symptoms um, such as self-doubt and um, mistrust of other women, um, self-sabotage. Yeah, I I mean, mean, there's so many. I, I can go on and on about that, and maybe that's something we'll talk about at some point, but... Um, but the trip, the big journey was really, it was a, a hands-on deck. You know, we we need to save our family. And so we took it very seriously. It was not a pleasure trip. We did not go hit all of the the national park. <laughs> you know, it was, <laughs> what do we need to do today, Spirit? You know, what do we need to do today, to, you know, to help to heal our family? And we had family meetings every morning. And um, the kids, you know, we were six and nine when we left, you know, grew up learning how to meditate and how to sit in circle and, and you know, with a talking stick and and everybody could say their piece and, and say how they were doing and all their, their um, you know, different levels of being physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So all of our, all of our PEMs, you know, uh, and um, it really, it changed us radically and we are very close now and the kids and and Peter are super super tight and um, he's you know Peter's a different man uh, uh, probably the man that he he would have been you know from the beginning had he not been 
seeking to heal his father wound by, you know, coming into the arms of the corporate father, you know, uh, becoming what, what he thought he was supposed to become. And, um, and he and I have been married 31 years, and we're going strong. Yay, that's awesome. Well, I love this story because this is, this is actually a dream, a dream I haven't accomplished, but um, you're talking about you, what you did is you put everything else aside and said, you, you know, society tells us we must have this, and my dreams from childhood told me I needed the White House on the Hill with the right. with the fence. And and the uh, corporate world tells Peter he has to be this, and the PTO tells me I have to be this. And all of these external messages, you, you, took, you were brave enough to put them aside and say, no, what I really need to be is healed and whole and be loved and love. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this, the idea of escaping modern society People tend to do that when they feel they need to be healed and whole, but they, they'll do it by drugs or they'll do it by alcohol or they'll do it by some other, some other means. But you guys very consciously, in a sense, you escaped, but you didn't escape. You didn't escape right. what you needed. And that's fantastic to hear that somebody went out and did that without... Yeah listening to what society had to tell them or what the PTO or what the unhealed mother or what anybody else did. When I was coming out of working on alien abduction, I literally wanted to escape society, but, but I wanted to go back to being whole. I wanted to do art. I wanted to see the world. And um, unfortunately, I hooked up with somebody who decided he just wanted to do drugs. So it was... <laughs> At least you did it, Lisa. You go. <laughs> you know, you, you go. Oh, gosh. No, I mean, really, we, it, we, there were a lot of people that were really mad at us. I mean, you know, our community in Asheville, um, whether we knew it or not or liked it or not, you know, they looked up to us. They, they saw the life we were living and they, you know, thought that we were like this example of what they were striving for. And so when we said, we're going to check this. <laughs> you know, this is not what we want. They got really angry. People got, I, I was stunned. I couldn't believe it, how angry people were with us uh, for leaving, you know, this this system that they had bought into. And it was, a, it was a very conscious decision to heal our family. What we didn't realize but became conscious of later was that we were dropping out of the culture so that we could observe it from the outside and see how families get so wrecked and how marriages get so wrecked and relationships, you know, get wrecked and people get lost because the culture is not a healthy culture. The mainstream culture is really thick. And we were able to see it from the outside viewpoint and, and recognize it, you know, over years of really deep work on ourselves and then to really be able to analyze the culture and say, oh, my God, you know, for me, the mother wound was mine. It was something I, my, the quest of my life was to find a mother. But then when I healed that, that wound, I realized that the culture has a mother wound. It's, you know, it, it's, it's global, you know. And so my call to action has been in writing this book is like, you know, yeah, I'm sharing my story, but there's a call to all the women and to the men that are willing to to heal our, in, our our internal issues, you know, that we may have had with our mothers, but it's really more about healing the planet, you know, healing the culture and bringing the feminine back into visibility, the feminine principle, and um, exalting the, the deep and hard work that being a conscious parent uh, is. And instead of just dismissing it, especially, you know, people just don't understand the sacredness that, um, that mothering and fathering in a truly conscious way is. And it's the most important work that there is. And it, it makes me think of, you know, I was a public school teacher for years, and people that work in public service, you know, teaching and social work and, you know, in the nonprofit world, and mothers, you know, the po- most poorly paid <laughs> people on the planet, and it's the most important work there is, you know, 
raising up the next generation, which will hopefully exceed us in our evolution. And when we have broken parents raising, you know, kids, then unfortunately the kids are absorbing some ancestral issues there that um, they will pass on unless they're cycle breakers like I was and like Peter is. So, um, yeah, it, we really got a chance to examine the culture from the outside and um, and we know now where to target our, our efforts, you know. Mm-hmm. So. so in your book, you you go through a timeline of the different stages that you went through with having a mother wound, uh, expressing it, or how it expressed in your life. And mm-hmm. um, I'm looking at these stages, but one one question is, what is mother? I mean, what does that mean? And and what are we? Who are we as daughters? Oh boy. Well, I think that the fair the fair thing to do is, if you're looking at that chapter, is actually read the definition. I don't have a copy of the book with me, unfortunately. Um, at this second, I, you would think I would on book tour that I would carry one strapped to my chest, <laughs> but. <laughs> It's in the car right now. But, All right. You know, I, I do have it. I do have it. Yeah. So let me read the I definition because it's good. Yeah. I mean, and um, but I, I have to scroll through it. So what is mother? Because all I got to was um, I got to the, the collage of this is how you transform lead into gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so this is that while you're looking for that. Um, there's a definition of mother and there's a definition of daughter that are actually pulled from the dictionary. And the reason I do that is because I think we often assume we understand what a word means. And so I am a curious person by nature and I like to get to the root of things and and to the origin of a word. And, And really, I like to look words up and just make sure that I have a full understanding of what that word means. And, you know, the word mother is so loaded you know, it's like the word God, you know, it's like, and the word love, so loaded. And it means something different to everybody. So I'm like, okay, let me go to the authority. Let me, let me look at the dictionary and see what the definition of mother is and what is the definition of daughter. And I was amazed how instructive it was actually to look at what the definition of those words was. Did you find it? Yeah. I didn't find mother. I found daughter, which means maybe mother is not as important to me well, as daughter. Mother, mother, the mother definition will be before that. If you decide to flip, you know, after you read the one, the one for daughter, if you okay. flip a little, you know, earlier in the book, you'll find the one for mother because that comes first. Flipping, but flipping back. I'm in Kindle. All right, bear with oh, me uh, here. No. Yeah. <laughs> so. So I'm doing my I'm doing my Kindle thing on the air. We're not supposed to talk about doing that, but um, uh, there's a lot of things allowing. No, I, it didn't come up. I think it just isn't. That's all right. That's okay. It's not coming. Okay. So we have yeah. So I'm going to do daughter. What is the letting? What is the definition of daughter? And maybe this will bring back back mother. One a a female child or offspring especially of human parents. Hmm. Okay, could be alien parents, but especially of human parents. B, a female <laughs> adopted child. C, a female descendant. Two, a woman or girl associated with or thought of as a child of something, as a country, a race, or a religion. Um, that doesn't say much. It you says, know what I um, say? It says a lot. It, it actually, to me, it, it, go ahead. I, I mean, well, to me, it doesn't say much. It says you're female, and you're a child, or you're adopted, or you're descendant. But the two is the one that I get the most out of. A woman or girl associated with it, or thought of as a child of something, a country uh-huh. eraser. That's the one that says a lot. Uh-huh. Um, the other one is just you're female, and you're a kid. But, um, well, you're the, you're you're the ch- female child of something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of something. And so, yeah, and so so the point of that, the point of including that is that as daughters, we we are um, we are we belong 
to something. Mm-hmm. We are part of we are part of something that is older than us, bigger than us, and that therefore we are the littler one. We are, you know, the child. We are the the smaller of the larger. And as right. daughters, we therefore are it's right for us to look to the larger or the older to guide us and to take care of us and yeah. to, you know, share share wisdom with us um, as we become as we become the older, you know, or the larger. So, um, and the definition of mother that you'll find relates essentially to um, to caring for um, offspring and by caring to to nurture to to guide to teach um, and to, for me the definitions of these words really helped clarify in my mind what my role was as a daughter a role is as a daughter because as a child I was adultized you know I was I was a little grown up um, because yeah. you know there was a lot of abuse in my house, and so I never experienced that feeling of being the um, the one who was supposed to be taken care of, the one who was supposed to look to the larger or the older for guidance and um, encouragement or assurance. Um, and so it was sort of a shock reading that that definition for me. It was a very big deal. Because it's like, this is what it means to be a daughter. Oh, I never had that. I never experienced that. You were basically so, not, you were not allowed your childhood. So there was right. nothing to, you were a daughter of, of question mark, really. Or yeah. a daughter, you know. Right, well, right. If, if, I am the, if I am the adult here, you know, where are my parents or what, who am I a daughter of? Which, which I think it really encouraged me to, um, to nurture my relationship with spirit. You know, I, I think I got the spiritual gene, and so it, it's always been easy for me to feel the etheric and feel spirit. And, you know, I was having conversations with the trees and the clouds and the wind and the earth, you know, when I was really little, and and when I was four, I was having conversations with God, and I remember, you know, looking up at the sky and saying, "Can I please come home?" and feeling a very clear, you know, no, this, you know, this is where you're supposed to be. And I called it God because I lived in the South. I grew up in the Bible Belt, you know, in North Carolina, and my parents sent me to. Um, a Christian preschool, a uh, Methodist preschool, when I was four. And, you know, I was all excited because I was like, yay, I'm going to get to go where God is, and I'm going to be, like, talking to God all day, and talk, God's going to talk to me all day. And I was, like, so happy, just in love with God. Mm-hmm. And that's the word that, you know, was used in the South. And so I get there, and I'm, like, going on and on about how awesome God is and, you know, the good conversations that we have. And my preschool teacher is looking at me like I've got, seven heads, you know, and she eventually stopped me and says, you know, um, you're, you're not supposed to do that. You know, God doesn't, God doesn't talk to you. And I said, oh, yes, he does. God talks to me and I love God and, you know, all this stuff. And she's like, you're going to hell if you keep talking like that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, right. So age four, I had a very important decision that actually shaped the rest of my life. Didn't know it then, of course, but the decision was either to honor my own direct experience of spirit or to listen to my authority figures who were going to intercede on my behalf. And for whatever reason, I think because I'm just a very stubborn individual, <laughs> I chose to honor my experience. At the age of four, I stuck with myself. Right. But what that did was sent me on a long journey in the wild woods, you know, of the world of seeking the answer to why I didn't belong in this world, why I couldn't find parents, why I couldn't feel parented. Even the spiritual parents were taken away from me when that teacher told me that I was going to hell. I had had split with the church at that moment. 
And so what that forced me to do was to find my own relationship with great mother and great father or the archetypal, you know, parents. Um, because that was the only set of parents that I could find and that could adequately parent me because I needed so much. So, um, so yeah, that's how I kind of wound up healing my mother wound, actually, was really falling into the arms of Sacred Mother, of Great Mother. And it's real. I mean, it's, you know, it's an archetype, yes, and so some could say, um, argue that it's imaginary, but the experiences that I share in the book, you know, the mystical experiences of direct uh, relationship with this intelligence, this mother intelligence, are so profound, and um, and healed healed my wound. You know, over those years that we met, Elizabeth. You know, that's what I was working on was healing that that mother heart inside of me, and then the belly, you know, in my mind, and. Like, I'm a good person, I'm a good woman, I'm a good daughter, and I belong in the world, you know. I have permission to be here and take up space and have an opinion. And um, it's changed my life. It's absolutely changed my life. And so that's why I work with women now to to heal whatever dark thing they've lived through and, you know, reclaim their voice because that is, like, one of the worst things that happens to us when we are um, traumatized in some way is our voice is probably the first thing that goes into hiding, you know. And um, yeah. the world needs our voices right now <laughs> in a very big way. Yeah. So. That is, that's amazing. So I did, after daughter came mother in Kindle, because Kindle's a trickster. So I'm going to read the definition of mother. 1A, okay. a parent. So just a female parent. B, a woman in authority, specifically the superior of a religious community of women, or two, an old or elderly woman, uh, two, uh, is source or origin. So mother is source, mother is the origin. That's amazing. Ooh, I got chills all over. I've got goosebumps. Mother is source. Yeah. Uh, Necessity is the mother of invention is what they put next to that. Necessity is the source of invention or the mother of invention. Um, three, maternal tenderness or affection. So mother is also tenderness and affection. I mean, these are, these are things. Now, I, I know you talk about Christ in, in your book, but these are things that actually, you know, Jesus is quite motherly. In the yeah. real Jesus. Jesus I know. Yeah, Jesus right. is <laughs> loving. You know, <laughs> not, the, yeah. not, the, yeah. not, the, the, not the a-hole Jesus. Jesus, the really, you know, right. the one who really loves everybody <laughs> unconditionally, and he doesn't care if you're Buddhist or, you know, yeah. uh, if you're in jail or whatever. He just really, really loves everybody. He's very motherly. He's he's nurturing and tender. And um, anyway, so what happened with you and Jesus after this? Was that when you you broke up with Jesus when you were four, or was it what yeah. happened? Yeah, I did. I broke up with Jesus when I was four, and it just broke my heart. Oh God, I loved to sing when I uh, I loved that song. You know, um, yes, Jesus loves me. You know, remember that one? Um, mm-hmm. I loved singing that when I was little. I just it, it just made me feel so happy. You know, to think of myself as one of the lambs and that Jesus was going to watch over and, and talk about an idealized you know father figure when my current you know my actual father was sexually abusing me and you know and all this mm. crazy stuff was going on in the house. So. But when, yeah, but when you're going to hell, can't, you know, happened, and then I saw this the deep, harsh betrayal of Jesus' father um, to right. allow him to be, to be killed. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Whoops, I probably shouldn't say that on your podcast, but yeah, well, I was probably like, shouldn't you know, say that. Yeah. you know, that's, so that's what happens if you are a Jesus follower, you get killed by your father, no thanks. Yeah. You know, I, so I was making some really bizarre, you know, mature <laughs> mature decisions at a very young age. And um, it's taken a long time, actually, for me to um, allow Yeshua, which is the name that I call Jesus because that, that feels right to me, um, to, you know, come in and inform my masculine side, you know, to help my masculine grow up, you know, um, so, so it's like uh, it's it's come full circle, which I'm really pleased, you know, to report. 
um, the original teachings of Yeshua are just so profound and so beautiful. And I'd like to see the, the people who purport to be a believer in him to actually live the way he lived his life, <laughs> according to what we know anyway, or the best guess we have. Right. You know? Take out that. You guys, you take you just take two tunics and and uh, here go heal people and travel mm-hmm. around. Don't own anything and um, allow them to feed you and sleep wherever they give you to sleep and you know kick the demons out of their house. I mean that's literally what it was. It yeah. is it's that which which is extreme faith, extreme um, devotion to spirit, extreme devotion to community because. If, you know what he says about if they're imagine if de- if demons can bring down a country, imagine what they can do to a family. Yeah. Um, you know, extreme devotion to other people, and in healing them and making them whole and making their families whole. Um, so yeah, people. Of course, I'm not doing it right now, but yeah, people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> But we can all aspire, right? We can all try and, and do little, the little things we can, you know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So this is interesting to me for this month because I had a, I had a two-year-old who went on a temper tantrum. Um, it, you're talking about the inner child in your book as well, and, and you studied indigenous medicine. And you say it's understood that all of the ages we have ever been are living inside of us. It was like, yeah, I had me and my two-and-a-half-year-old <laughs> This month, yeah. my I I uh, realized that somebody I got reconnected with a soulmate, and um, the soulmate happens to be married, and I am not of the mindset to. And there's nothing wrong with a marriage, really. That is not wrong with any marriage that's going on right now in the world, and you know, so it, it's a matter of my two and a half year old went, I want, I want, I want, I want, and my adult and my adult said, you're two. <laughs> You know, you're a two-year-old. So, but it is, it's like every age we've been, we have a 15-year-old, we have a two-year-old, we have a 39-year-old. All of those are living at the same time in that. And um, it's interesting to see that you say that. Um, But tell us, uh, when you went through this process of of being in the RV, the seven years, um, what did you learn about your inner child, and and how was your two-year-old? Uh, that's a great question. Um, actually, I, you know, from in the indigenous medicine point of view, which um, is something that I practice. Uh, my father's family is Algonquin, and um, you know, come to it ancestrally, but also have been um, received transmission from three other lines of indigenous medicine. Um, from that point of view, you know, it's known that we carry every age that we've ever been inside of us as well as all of our ancestors. So make that, you know, interesting connection. It's like we have a lot of people inside of us, you know, a lot of a lot of individuals. But um, while we were on that journey, what I learned about my own inner children was that there were a lot of them. And um, great mother you know, this archetypal mothering intelligence that came in and, you know, overlighted me and taught me and educated me and mothered me, taught me a way of of healing those individual children, those individual parts of myself in a way that connected them to parts of my body, you know, where I would feel uh, an ache or tightness, you know, in a part of my body and I could go to that part of my body and ask, who's here? You know, how old are you? What message do you have? Um, what do you need? And actually have a dialogue with this part of self in the body. And when the need was answered, the body would respond by letting go and being at ease again. No more pain, no more ache, no more constriction. And some pretty significant, you know, physical body issues um, clearing up as a result of, of doing this work. And it's very specific. The kind of the kind of talk with these parts is very mothery. It's not like a psychologist or a therapist or a, a, an, an, um, an analyst. It's it's mother. It's this loving mother heart dialoguing with these parts. And so, great mother 
gave this to me and then asked me to name it inner tribe work, not inner child work because we all know what inner child work is, inner tribe mm-hmm. work. It's a very um, specifically going in with that mothering attention, that mothering heart to heal those parts and then to integrate those parts back into our wholeness in a healed and whole state. So it's kind of a cross between uh, indigenous medicine and the oldest, you know, sacred mothering medicine in the universe. Just this most basic thing of I love you, you're going to be okay, I'm here for you, what can I, you know, I'm listening, what do you need to say? And the parts that have been disenfranchised or split off that are seeking to come home just crumble in her arms and surrender and suddenly they're, they're, they're part of your wholeness again. It is astonishing. It's the most, it's the swiftest technique I've ever experienced and I've had lots of, you know, therapy over the years and tried lots of different techniques but this one incorporates the physical, the emotional, the mental and the spiritual so therefore it's, uh, it hits it, you know, on the head. It's, it's complete and sustainable, and when it's done, it's done. So that technique, the inner tribe technique that um, I describe in the book, is um, so powerful that I've actually considered that maybe I need to offer, um, you know, a certification in it because it, it is just extraordinary. I would, so. I would love that because this, you know, in the past month with this person coming back into my life and not being available, my inner tribe is, is on the war path. And, yeah. you know, for me, this would be excellent work for this time period. It would be a way to use the events of the time to heal rather than mm-hmm. just be going, I feel like I'm being tortured and everybody is yelling. <laughs> you know? right, right. Yeah, right. And that's like a really young, you know, that's a really young person inside to, to feel that way. Like the, the, everything is just much bigger. Like the emotion yeah. is much bigger, you know, bigger than yeah. the world. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's overwhelming. Everything. It's like, no, let's let's talk to the let's talk to all these different ages and and everybody and say, well, yeah. And okay. It's what, important what you... to. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I thought you were finished yep. with your thoughts. Nope. Go ahead. No, I'm um, done. I just... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So I was just going to say that I think that the wave of the future is is safe uh, self self healing. Um, I, recognizing that we all need someone, you know, to to watch and witness and sometimes facilitate us, you know, for our healing process because you know it's a lot. Sometimes we can't see ourselves, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I really believe strongly that people who are motivated to heal, if they have the right tools in their hands, can heal themselves. And they don't need to go, you know, pay somebody a lot of money or put themselves under the care of perhaps an unscrupulous, you know, therapist. Or um, So my goal in, in describing the various techniques that I use to heal my mother wound in the book, which I'm very specific and very transparent about, um, is so that people have the, the power in their hands to heal themselves. Um, I do, you know, of course, recommend that we be responsible, you know, with what we what we do, you know, and that we we all have blind spots, and so there are times when it's important to engage a trusted practitioner. But I really feel like coming into responsibility for our own health and wholeness is really the wave of the future that um, pulls us out of that expert model of the Piscean era the kind of the top-down model, like you have to go to an expert or you have to have the intercessor to get the God sort of thing, into the mm-hmm. Aquarian model, which is where we actually are more more partnered with ourselves, more trusting of ourselves, and um, not needing to go to an authority figure, you know, to be blessed or to be made, you know, healed, that we can actually work on that ourselves. So that was the point of putting that in the book. Yeah, good. It's good stuff. So, and I like, um, you're talking about maturity, you know, raising children, but also raising yourself or allowing, you know, listening to the inner child and, and uh, allowing them to say what they need and, and get what they need. Um, mm-hmm. But you have, 
you know, pretty strong definitions of what maturity is, and I'm just going to quote them here. One is, knowing myself, continuing on a never-ending quest to know myself, including my shortcomings as well as my strengths. Loving myself exactly as I am, Bridget Jonesing myself, as I would call it. Uh, mm -hmm. Recognize the perfection of my life while also recognizing the perfection of my desire to improve it. And improving and growing myself, accepting that I will never be finished. I will always be a work in progress. Always checking inwardly first, cultivating self-reflection and insight, taking responsibility for my life and choices. And this go on and on. But these are doing what needs to be done, uh, acknowledging that my needs are my responsibility to fulfill, being fully alive, seeing life as a gift, being fully present, when going into the past to retrieve or heal a part of self, a large part of myself is firmly in the present to wisely observe and facilitate this process. That's what I also went through this month, was coming back to the present, coming back to the now. It's like, wow, that didn't happen. It's not happening. It's not happening now. You know, you're making it much bigger than it needs to be. Come, you know, be in the present is very important. It's where the power is to do these other things. Um, that was my experience of, of trying to come to terms without any guidance, my inner tribe this month, reaching out to others for help when I cannot do it for myself, being willing to receive and accept help and love from others, caring for people without having to take care of them, giving generous, generously for the sheer joy of it without expectation of return, keeping good boundaries when needed, keeping myself wisely safe, being in integrity, the inside and outside match up, being committed to inner work when things are not going well, seeing others in all creation as a reflection of self, appreciating diversity, letting others be who they are, live and let live, being willing to be strong and saying, I'm sorry with a sincere heart, knowing I do not have all the answers, being willing to ask questions, not taking things personally, but as opportunities <laughs> to grow. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> taking the high road. Always striving to be my best, biggest, most expanded self, forgiving myself when I'm unable to be my best, biggest, and most expanded self. We cleaned out my back uh, porch today. Where I had been ill, and I had let all of the recycling like go up to the ceiling, and I was so sad when I saw the stuff we cleaned out. But the back porch is beautiful, and it was like, oh. But I was so sad and mad with myself that that, that had happened. But it was like, oh, well, I'm taking responsibility for it now, but I'm so sad <laughs> that I did yeah. this. Um, yeah. And it was, there was one more, but, um, and the, the thing just slipped off of it. But this is, a, wow. this is a lovely list because it's so gentle and it's so forgiving and it's so nurturing. Oh, thank time. you. Thank you. I so appreciate your assessment of that. I feel that way too. Uh, and, again, that was from Great Mothers. That was like, you know, in the absence of really knowing how to mother myself or how to be mothered by another physical woman, going straight to that source of wisdom, you know, to the source of mothering um, enabled me to have all these words. I mean, the words in this book are really, are really hers and mine. And um, she taught me, you know, that mothering intelligence was, was so wise and taught me so much. And, uh, and yeah. above all, you know, gentleness with self, love of self, you know, just like a great mother would, you know. The most ideal Define. model that we wish for, you know. <laughs> yeah. Now, now your your experience of the great mother, and this will be our our last bit. But um, how do you perceive great mother? Because I I had a really not very nice mother, but I have a relationship with Mother Mary. I'm not Catholic, um, uh -huh. but Mother Mary comes and helps me do healings and. When I teach spirit mediumship, she'll be who comes for the inspirational part. And it's like, wow, who am I to get, you know, Mother Mary? But that's who who comes for me. And I think it is based on need. You know, my have a need to have a great mother. So, and Mother Mary is a pretty great mother. But how is yes, it for you? Um, I've been drawn to goddesses of every, you know, culture and every era since I can remember, even as a little kid watching that cartoon, um, Isis, it wasn't a cartoon, but you know, it was on Saturday morning, um, during Saturday morning cartoons, and I totally identified with her, and then of course the bionic woman, and Wonder Woman, and all these kind of awesome women figures, but 
goddesses over as 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 you know an adult goddesses over all over the world um, have come and gone. You know, faces of of great mother coming in to support me in a very specific way or a very specific um, time with uh, whatever particular wisdom they had, you know, to offer. And it's interesting that you that you mentioned Mary because Mary came in very strongly for me in the last year when I went to France to take photographs of the Black Madonnas over there last summer. Um, Mary basically zoomed in and picked me up and said, you're mine, <laughs> you're my daughter. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You know, so I've been working a lot with Mary recently. But in terms of great mother, like the big mother, the like the original, the archetypal mother, I feel her as prime source. I feel her as the womb of um, space. I feel mm-hmm. her as the primordial beginnings of all things. Um, I feel her as the origin of the universe. Um, and maybe that, you know, would translate in, you know, a scientific language as a, a black hole that, you know, sort of reversed and, and began, you know, creating this universe. Um, I feel her as just this vastness, this incredible, uh, vast power and wisdom and depth of caring, as big as the infinite universe, you know, which, of course, we can't even get our head around. Uh, But that's how I experience her. That's how I feel her. And that's how her voice comes to me, is, is from this vast, wide space. And she occasionally, you know, whether she comes through the face of a goddess, or Mary, or through another woman, or through a man, or through the a bird, or the sky, or a mountain, you know, um, I, I can still recognize her, whatever face she wears, and um, she's profound, she's profound. Leisha Berry, thank you so much for sharing on Mother's Day with us about the Great Mother and your book, I Am Her Daughter, The Healing Path of a Woman's Power, which is available on Amazon. And how do people reach you if they don't want to work with you? Um, They can find me at LeishaBerry.com, L-I-C-I-A-B-E-R-R-Y.com. And the book is actually on all the online retailers. So if you're not an Amazon fan, you can find it elsewhere too. And I've got autographed copies on my website for sale as well. Great. Thank you so much, Alicia, for being here. And we're going to go on next to James Tyson, who will be on, um, I think, with the shift or two mediums in a large. I ought to know this. Sorry, James. Love you. We'll see you next week on Cosmic Passport. See you all later, guys. So, James, is it two mediums and a large, one medium and a large, three mediums and a dog. What's up tonight? What are we, we doing? We have now? two mediums and a large. Unfortunately, Paisley's got a psychic fair going on, uh, the Mother's Day Psychic Fair. So uh, come on, talk to your mom. Um, okay. But we have Skeeter coming in, and you can always talk to your, your lo- long-lost mother if she's around through Skeeter. But we also have... Because we have Skeeter, and she's connected with this kind of thing, we have the ability to get out there and actually, if and we tried this a couple of days ago, and it was quite successful, but if you were a kid and you were walking down the street and you saw something strange, um, no, not Mr. Edgar, who was always wanting you to trim the hedge, but the, you know, if you saw what you thought was a UFO, a Bigfoot, or anything like that, shadows in your room, any of that paranormal kind of stuff, call in, and Skeeter will tell you what it was, whether it was just a shadow, um, whatever it was, you know, you maybe saw a Frisbee, she, she'll let you know, um, or if you think you have an implant, if you think You've been abducted by aliens. Skeeter will let you know. Other things she could let you know is, um, I, I don't know if you want to get into. You, you'd almost have a full have to have a full reading with her to kind of discover. You know, if you're still on the path you're supposed to be, or you're you're a little bit sensitive, or you're not sensitive, but she is um, available tonight for two hours, starting in about. Oh, let's see, seven minutes-ish 
to talk about that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Are you? I am. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I, I was on mute because I didn't want Wyatt to bark. He wants to go outside. But I am. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great show, and I'm going to be listening in for a bit. Excellent. So I will be seeing what she says, and maybe. And we're almost out of there. Yes. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night. Bye-bye. Hi there. This is Dave Scott. And I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at SpacedOutRadio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. Hi there. This is your psychic medium, Joanna. And I would love it if you would join us every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. With host James Tyson, we'll bring you personal psychic messages on two mediums and a large. Questions about love, life, career changes. We would love it if you would come and join us live. Call in and listen in for the experience. Allow us to open the doors to your other side. Two mediums and a large. Heard only on Spaced Out Weekend at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for news beyond the mainstream news? Head to spacedoutradio.com and check out the SOR Spacewire. This is Spaced Out Radio's Eric Markham, news director for the SOR Spacewire. Daily, I will bring you intriguing stories and outlandish reports from what's going on around the world. UFO sightings, paranormal activity, conspiracies, alternative health, and so much more. And if you have news, email me at news at spacedoutradio.com. It's paranormal news at its finest. Welcome to The Encounter. At spaceoutradio.com, The Encounter Online is SOR's trusted news source for everything weird and strange going on around the world. This is news editor Eric Markham. Our team of journalists are scouring the planet for those strange stories that rarely make the mainstream. No fear-mongering or fake news here. Head over to spaceoutradio.com and encounter The Encounter. Attention, Spaced Out Radio listeners. For only $5 a month, you can join Spaced Out Radio Space Travelers. Your membership at spacedoutradio.com will give you access to private fan area on the website, get you a monthly newsletter, draws for monthly swag, and a whole lot more. Sign up today to become a part of the Spaced Out Radio experience. The third Monday of every month, Spaced Out Radio is going to bring you a different look at everything paranormal. Welcome to the reporters. Jim Mallard, Vanessa Hogel, Denise Garcia, and Christina George join me, Dave Scott, for a look at the weird and strange from the other side of the microphone. We'll break down ghosts, UFOs, cryptids, and the people investigating them. The paranormal media has never been heard like this. Come listen to the reporters. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the place have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit, and expect a miracle. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream story so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. It's 
time to go live on Spaced Out Weekend. Thirteen, please. Oh, hi, Kevin. Oh, is that the time? Kevin, my friend, don't you find that watch just a little bit loud? Well, I certainly hope our buddy Bumblefoot is playing when we get there. Oh, you stinky big bundle of hair. I said Bumblefoot, not Bigfoot. Oh, it's going to be a long night. It's time to head to the 13th floor of the Old Log Cabin for Spaced Out Weekend with James Tyson. You can tweet James at James Tyson SOR. You can find him on Instagram, Spaced Out Weekend. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. And now, perched high in his captain's chair, way above the clouds, here's James Tyson. Welcome everybody to Spaced Out Weekend. It is I, James Tyson, just like Dave said, all the way from Baston, Massachusetts. And I want to welcome everybody out there to my little log cabin on the 13th floor of the Spaced Out Radio Network here in those paranormal portals of the lower left Canadian coast here in Cascadia. And it's a good, good coast to be on because it was uh, relatively sunny today. And I think the weather is picking up here in the Pacific Northwest. But I want to thank everybody who is dropping in tonight, listening through our website at spacedoutradio.com, on Spreaker, on the United Public Radio Network, Renegade Talk Radio, the High Plains Talk Radio Network, Radio Guide FM, TalkStream Live, and on Stitcher, and our friends in the capital city of Noonan, Georgia, at WQEE 99, Rock the Key, in the House of the Walking Dead. And tonight, we have... Two mediums and a large, less one of the mediums, because young Paisley has been pushing all day on a mother Mother's Day psychic fair where we live, and she's probably just completely read out, and we're now here with young Skeeter of Wellhouse. Now, what was that? <laughs> Skeeter... Has used to be a seamstress. Uh, she used to make all really cool costumes. If you're going to go to a Paracon, you'd go to Skeeter and say, I want to be Wonder Woman. And honestly, you should see my outfit. I got to tell you. It's, um, <laughs> but she's left that and gone full time into what she does best. And that is to kind of find out what's going on in your life and peeking over your shoulder via spirit guides and seeing what you should be doing to improve your life. She has that unique ability also to talk to you about something maybe you saw as a kid, something out of the corner of an eye in your room, or something that could very well have been a spaceship, or a Bigfoot, um, the Loch Ness Monster, um, your creepy librarian, anything like that. She has the ability to do that and uh, separate fact from imagination. So it's really good to have these two hours with Skeeter doing this for you. And this is a call in and, um, grab your crayon or what I like to say, grab your anything with a, a black shoe with a, a good black sole on it on a white piece of drywall maybe in your living room, and right now, write down this number, 575-694-6634. Again, 575-694-6634. Or you can also call via Skype. And my Skype address is James underscore Tyson 32. James underscore Tyson. Tyson 3-2. And we're going to be kicking this off for three hours. And after this, after Spaced Out Weekend at midnight and the witching hour here in Cascadia, 
I urge you to go over on Spreaker, those who are listening on Spreaker, and listen to S4. And it is uh, a wonderful show put on by Eric Cooper and the lads at Forest Moon Paranormal. And brilliant. And if you guys want to find out what's up with them, go to, um, or what they're going to be talking about tonight, just go over to Forest Moon Paranormal's Facebook page, see what's up. Actually, if you're going to be up anyway... Just go over there. Um, so the number again is 575-694-6634. 575-694-6634. Skeeter, how yeah. the heck are you? Other than a headache, I'm really good. You still got that headache from the bump on your neck or your head? Yep. Yeah, I, I even um, I've had I've talked to a couple mediums about what happened that night, and and I even talked to our our beloved Elizabeth about it, and it's kind of interesting getting some confirmation on on exactly what happened that night. So I think I'm probably going to have this bump for a little while. Oh, and what did they say about it? Um, it was intentional. Um, two of them did confirm that I I did cross over that night, but I oh. came back. Okay, hold on. When you you mean you died? Yeah. Don't do that. Well, I I got home and I just uh, everything went black. That's and the doctor in the morning said you're lucky to be alive. And I was kind of like, I okay, that's something weird to tell someone that you're lucky to be alive. And I had one friend go, "Oh my God, you were dead!" And I'm like, "What do you mean? There, I saw you. You were dead. You were on the other side." And I got to talk to Elizabeth today, and she even mentioned that I crossed. That's weird. As a result of this. That's absolutely amazing. But they didn't want me yet, so they sent me back to you. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you can't die before Mother's Day. That's a rule, I'm pretty sure, of someone. I... <laughs> but it is what it is, and yeah, I'm, my head's going to hurt for a while, because it's, it's a pretty good-sized goosebump. No, oh, well, it. I'm actually quite happy it's a goosebump, because if... If it didn't swell up into a goosebump, that means you're still dead, and after a while, you're going to get a little bit stinky. But, yeah. Yeah. That's just <laughs> my police coming out in me. Uh, <laughs> we've got quite a lineup of uh, callers coming coming in tonight. Woo-hoo! We've got uh, five in the queue already. So without further ado, I'm going to doo-doo into you do. So let me see. Leanne, you are up first. Yep, I'm here. Hi, Leanne. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you tonight? I'm good. I'm just curious to know whether you can um, help me get good direction the next month or two. The is next that, month or two? Vague? Yeah. yeah um, I'm waiting to be real- for decisions to be made. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely in a holding pattern in the next two months. Um, no offense, spirit saying, hold on. Hold on to your britches tight. Count your pennies. Um, you're actually looking at more of a three-month plan than a two-month plan. So, okay. Um, I, I'm asking for clarification right now. I haven't even spun out the cards yet. Um, I do ask everybody listening, please be a little patient. I've got some new energies coming through, so I'm learning their language. And I don't know what the decisions are you're waiting on. Um, give me just a second. I'm being told to draw three cards for you. Okay, thanks. Um, I apologize if I'm if I'm a little off. May I ask a question about one of the decisions you're waiting for? Sure. Is it related to employment? 
No. Okay, good. That sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> Relating to employment? Okay, good. <laughs> no. Oh, okay, D- then totally forget I said that. Uh, <laughs> Never mind about that. <laughs> yeah. Is it about your spleen? Uh, unless it's no, no. <laughs> <laughs> unless you the want reason- to talk about my employment, but yeah, go ahead. Go on. <laughs> The reason they're saying three months is because you're going through a lot of growth and a lot of change right now. And one of the things that you've inadvertently done is that you've put a lot of decisions you should be making for yourself in the hands of others. Does that sound about right? Uh, Tricky. I have left it in the hands of others to do their part. They seem to be dragging their heels. Well, it's you got to realize that when you put it in the hands of others to do their part, you're at yeah. their mercy. True. And it does become their decision. Yep. So as you are waiting for these individuals to get their tushies in gear... You really need to emphasize to them that this is important to you. This is actually affecting you personally. Right. Um, I do see it affecting you financially. So be aware of that. And the emotional roller coaster is what's really hard on you right now. Because you don't know where you stand. Right. So let them know uh, they really, really need to get their tushies in gear because spirit is actually kind of playing with them to test how much you really want this and how much you really want these changes in your life to occur. Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, why is spirit playing with them or playing, I guess, with me? About, uh, do I really, really, really want this path? What can we see you, might be an outcome? Um, this is not to be offensive in any way whatsoever, but they're, they're kind of commenting that you have a tendency to invest heavily in something, and the mm-hmm. minute it doesn't start to pay off as you expect it to, you tend to get distracted and move on, and that is so cool. Um, sorry. Um, and you tend to get distracted and move on to the next plan. You're one of those people who really believe in plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, without giving too much investment into what plan A is, what plan B is, what plan B, C. Does that sound about right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I I wouldn't have said that about me, but I guess... Put it under your hat and think about it because they're, like I said, I don't mean for this to be come out in an offensive way, but they're kind of concerned yeah. that if they don't make you really invest in this and take this into a personal investment, that you may not appreciate the outcome the way you should and you may not learn the lessons you need to from this. And what might those be? Patience. Or is that a different question? Mm-hmm. Generosity. Self-management, self-manifestation, trust. Mm. Trust. There's a lot Mm. of learning in this. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard because it's something that you really want and you want it now, but it's just these things. They just take time. Okay. They take time, and you really need to convince these people that this is important to you. You need I to not they, just they got leave that. it in their no, hands. I, I think they do have it. I think they've just got other things, and other things take priority. I think that's, but that's, that's the easy. thing. You need to not let that mm, other thing take me. priority. <laughs> believe me. <laughs> I don't know how many other which ways I can be jumping yeah. up and down to let them know and I'll, everybody else know that this is and it's a heart to heart conversation. It's not so much as don't don't take the five year old of me, mine, now, mine, 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 me, 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 me. Don't right. take that take it for, to a heart to heart. 
even offer to help them with whatever they're going through so that they can come forward and help you with what you've got to do. Hmm. It's, it's a, it's learning how to manifest what you want by helping others manifest what they need. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Cause yes. Yeah. So if I want a house made of bricks and James is the brick maker, but James is behind on my order, I may go over to James and go, Hey James, can I help you make bricks so that we can get the bricks for my house made now? And by helping James make the bricks for the orders that are before mine, we can get to the bricks from my order quicker so that we can build a house. Have you, I know you've talked to, had communication with that that other group, that other unit Mm -hmm. that's monitoring Mm -hmm. it. Have you Mm -hmm. said, could you just assign somebody? Yes, yes. I just spoke to that said person today and made that recommendation. Um, but, um, he kind of, he's kind of touting the old fashioned line of, Oh, well, I've been really busy and blah, blah, which yeah. is, well, then know, he typical. needs, he needs somebody to help him with it. And that's what I was thinking. Yeah. About. That's what I've suggested. Yeah. 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 No, I, and, Good. and of course, um, you know, this person doesn't communicate in verbal. It's only a via email. Great. Uh, so it's tricky. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, tricky. Well, as a person who's normally very hard to get a hold of myself, Mm -hmm. be persistent. Because (laughs) even James has to lay out traps for me. He sets out little rat traps with chocolate on them, and and eventually one of them triggers, and he's got me. So, right. (laughs) You know, maybe. Do you know what the end result of this is going to be? I know that's not going to be all uh, rainbows and uh, unicorns, but. uh, They're saying it's going to be an even kill, which means it's going to be, Mm. you're going to break even. And So you're going to get get what you need, but you're not going to get what you want. So. Okay. That that actually totally makes sense, Leanne, because you want Mm. um, capital punishment. Yeah. And it's, it's going to be, it's going to be the proper... Um, the proper amount uh, of outcome whatever. Yeah. for, and in hindsight, you're going to look and say, "Yeah, that that affected that person just as much, and may affect them all their lives just as much as this doing yeah. to me." No, oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, that that makes good sense. Um, is it just me in the, involved in this grand thing, or or are there other people, Peter? There like is no, other, me, me and the other person, or is it more than just us two? There's more. Like, There's actually a collection of people whose karma is playing out in this. Uh, yeah, well, I could see four of them so far, but is there more than four? There's, there's the four, and there's two more. Two more. Um, and are they intimately connected with me, or are they... Um, they're... Second or are they hand. like strangers to me? They're strangers to you, but they're involved in the situation. Oh, creepy. I've got creepy. a question okay. on Leanne's behalf. Um, the protagonist mm. in this um, this challenge um, is not what I'm going to talk about right now, but does, well, I guess it is. There was a letter sent to Leanne's father. Could you tell me if that letter was sent by the protagonist? Mm. In the event, they said he had a hand in it. Uh huh. But he that didn't. Does not surprise me. He didn't physically write it. But he didn't it send a... it himself. Okay. Is so the... did he write it, or did he have someone write it and send it? Um. Give me just a second. It was trans. It was dictated. Mm. He dictated it okay. to someone else. Yeah, the that person, makes perfect sense. The person he dictated it to, will that person eventually surface, and will they support Leanne in the long run? They're saying that person is hiding right now. And what about... Okay, sorry. For no, hold on. You, I got one more. Oh. Does that person okay. work 
with our protagonist. Yes. Okay. Uh, in the same location or in a different location? She's in a different location. Oh, it's a she. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. And I have a question about a bizarre interaction with, um, how do I put that? Online stranger oh, yeah. who I think might be connected to the protagonist. Are they Don't connected? feed him. Don't huh? feed him? No shit. That's, no. that's hey. what they said is don't feed him. Sorry. <laughs> don't feed him. I don't know what that means. That means don't, don't. give him any of your energy. Don't communicate with him. Don't oh, no, give him what anything. Doing. Yeah, but, but I'm just not sure if he's not connected with the protagonist we're referring to, whether it is him if, or whether it's someone else. They're related to the situation. They're uh, kind of a... What I'm being shown is that they're stirring the pot. Okay. Yeah, I think... They're do a I third have party. My, okay, that makes perfect sense. And are they going... Are they planning any more stirrings? Like, is my safety or the safety of my kids jeopardy? No. Okay. Okay. It's, um, I don't know why they're using this word, but it's political at this point. Oh. That makes I c- perfect sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense to me, too. Oh, uh, our listeners are going, what the hell what are they the talking hell? about? But it's something <laughs> that, it's a personal thing and that oh, Leanna shared with me, and I've known Leanne for many years, so it it's 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 quite devastating and it it's very interesting and actually this was a pretty good reading Leanne. yeah it was that was awesome yeah that's very cool so is there anything else that spirits would like to suggest it's, they they say breathe breathe they say take a deep breath and breathe it's a, they're saying it's almost over good and just breathe and be grateful for the fact that it ends. It's and not going it, to end the it, way you want, but it's going to end. Oh. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Is the protagonist no, going to get in trouble? Important. Um, no. Gonna, someone's going to bite the dust for him. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, well, then I'm hey, not well, happy. Yeah, that's kind of crappy. No. It's going to be one of those... Let, let me explain what they're showing me. What it is, it's going to be one of those, he's going to not get convicted or or called out for this. Someone's going to take it for him. But he's going to be damaged from here on out. Yeah, I don't know. Can I say to the hey spirits, that's not good enough based on what happens? That um, if there's some way that we can, I'm sorry, I'm just saying, like, just, you know, Does free will, will kick be in put in at or? risk. Hmm. Huh? Yeah, free will. We can change things, right, Skeeter? <laughs> yeah, free will. And that's, but that's the way things are right now if you don't get some fires lit, like we talked about earlier. I'll help you with that again. Uh-huh. Let's get let's uh-huh. get on this next week when you get back. Okay. Hey, and yeah, is yeah. she staying in a haunted hotel room right now? Yeah, and the dude <laughs> Actually, I don't know if she really is, but there is a spirit with her who's watching over her and petting her head right now. Very cool. And it's not a creepy petting, it's a comforting petting. Like nice. it's okay, I'm all right. Take care of yourself first. Don't Mm -hmm. let this destroy you. Perfect. Thank you. That is really cool. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Talk to you when you get back. Get those fires lit so you can change the outcome, okay? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I just don't know where else to go. We've tried it all so far that I can come up with, but... We'll get it. There's always another way. Yeah. James is smart. He'll figure it out. (laughs) <laughs> Don't wait on me. Okay, thanks, Leon. All right, guys. Thank you. Good night. You bet. Good night. All right. Oh, I need you to relax here now. Um, <laughs> where are we going next? We are going to Cindy. 
Hi, Cindy. Hi. Hey, Cindy Hi. runs with Tahiti. <laughs> oh. She does what? Cindy runs with Tahiti. Oh. And that's where I wanted to go. But instead I got Cindy, which is just as good, if not better. Just as okay. good, yes. <laughs> oh, I... Uh, that was heavy from the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And oh, it, that was it's heavy. just one of those things. <laughs> They're saying, well, take a breath, honey. Take a breath. Mm-hmm. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was so heavy for me. So I, I, I'm just trying to shake off the thing from the end right now. Okay, and, well, do me a big favor. Yeah. Take on either hand, hold your pinky finger and your ring finger. Just hold them, love them. Like, you got them? Like, okay. Now take three slow, deep breaths. The audience is encouraged to do this as well. And as soon as you're done with those three breaths, switch hands. And do it again. And again, the audience is encouraged to join in. This is a grounding exercise, and it's going to help her get rid of all that noise, all that miscellaneous, and let her focus in on my wonderful, loving voice. No, you can't you have good, that huh? number. Mm-hmm. You feel better? No. Perfect. <laughs> it, you'll feel better in a second. She's she's a bit of a so through the roof energy person. Okay, Cindy, I'll keep quiet. Go ahead. So, what's up, Cindy? Um, I wanted to I wanted clarity on my love life. Oh, you wanted a little info on the cart on that? Yeah. It's so very complicated. <laughs> Spirit just chimed in and said it's more than complicated. You need a novel and a and a and a user's I manual. I I don't know what what's going on. Um, I don't know why I keep getting such complicated situations. They're saying it's because you don't trust your gut. That you allow a lot of your back history and a lot of your um, personal needs in order to fill your own cup to cover up what that person really is and represents. Say that again. Because I do what? Um, I don't trust my gut. Like, don't trust your that gut. Was- that you're so intense on finding someone yeah. who can fill your needs and that you can fix that you tend to overlook what your gut is telling you and jump yeah. right in. Um, you've never really oh. had a strong relationship guide presented, but you're a very empathic individual. You you feel the needs of others. Yeah. And you tend to be drawn to those who have similar pains as yourself. Okay. So you really want to give them what you wish you were receiving. Okay. And in return, you think, well, if I give them love, they're going to give me love in return. If I give them a cookie, they'll give me a cookie. Mm. Um, and the truth is you're giving something to someone who doesn't have it themselves. And even you I don't to have it, it to, to give. You need to okay. give it to yourself. Okay. So it okay, gets more, easy. the more complicated it gets, the more you're trying to build it and manipulate it so it's starting to backfire on you. So what do I do about my husband, though, in my situation? Because I want out of my marriage. <sighs> well, just... Wow. Um... The cards that I'm getting... The first card, I'm going to read what it's telling me because when I'm pulled to words, I I need to tell them. It's a removal of illusion, fears, lies, deceit, and everything that is holding you back. And the next one is healing of the mind through inner reflection. And both of these are talking about truth and mental healing. So, as you venture forth 
with deciding mm-hmm. to go with this divorce. Mm-hmm. And please note, I am not a lawyer, so <laughs> be careful. No, don't worry. I've got some. I've got. I've got. I've worked with a few lawyers. <laughs> so good. Oh, yeah. Um, but be aware that this is about you healing. This is you mm-hmm. recognizing your role in this, not just his role in this. Yeah. And yeah, it's my finances are making it so I'm stuck. And well, it's like Well, you've got support. There is support for you out there. So don't let that support? be a barrier. Who's my support? It's people outside of your circle. Like who? <laughs> Me. James. Um, going to sell his house. <laughs> the, the truth is, they're, they're telling me that you need to go to individuals who specialize in why you're leaving your husband. Okay. And they will get you connected with the right assistance. Okay. And if you find a lawyer who's better suited to your needs... Okay. He'll even guide you to the right people to help you through this. So I need a different lawyer? You need one who is more designed for what you need and better suited to your circumstances. I don't know if that means is changing Diane your lawyers. Someone? Is that Diane someone? Is that the right lawyer? They're not going to tell me, honey. Okay. okay. You need to go to your, whoever your lawyer is okay, now, you need to go to them and ask them, can you help me get in contact with people who can help me with X, Y, Z? Oh, I know where to go to get in contact with it, not my lawyer. I know where to go. So. Okay. Then they can tell me if there's a better lawyer or whatever, and then they can tell me how to work with my lawyer better then. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, there's there's a lot of resources that you need to, okay. they're saying you kind of need to get rid of ego and just jump in and say, I need help. Okay. And they're not going to take away my kids if I do that? If you're asking for help, if you're showing the kind of things that you need, they'll help you with that as well. But they took my kids from me. Like, so I don't really want to get help anymore from anyone. Spirit is telling me cool. you really need to reach out okay. to your lawyer and the right people to get assistance. Okay. Because if you don't, things aren't, aren't going to play out as well as they should. Okay. Okay. <sighs> and this okay. is really about... This is this is not about ego. This is not about fear. That's what that first one's really about is letting go of your fears and releasing ego and facing the fact that you need help yes. and getting that help. Okay. And I don't know who this spirit is. It's... Um, She's really strong. I mean, a very dominant, big female energy. Um, very strong mama energy. My grandma? Uh, I don't know. I think she's more of a guide for you. And she's really saying, if you want to care for those babies, you need to get this assistance. You need to ask for help. And understand things are going to play out better if you get the help, then if you don't. Okay. Okay. Okay, you can tell her okay, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Damn sorry, it. sometimes Damn. they just get really, you know, they know and they need you to trust that path. Yeah. And it's not the most friendly path, it's sometimes a very humbling path but it's what you need the most to help you right now okay it'll be better than it is right now then if I go that way it'll be a lot the the outcome will be better than if you don't that's what they're telling me what is the outcome going to be if I don't they're not telling me 
They're just tell, giving me the specifics of of this is. It, okay, it's a better route if you get the help. What about with my work? Be patient. Keep your head low. Okay. It's, Do your it's best. Like they don't. Is I'm never home with my kids and stuff, and I just don't know. But I guess I have to keep going with it, right? Yeah, you have to keep going with it. I don't have a choice. They okay, said if so you I, ask the people for help, they'll even help you with that. Who? Oh, ask the the support people. Yes. Okay. They um, said there's a whole network through the churches, through the social services. Your lawyer will have uh, connections, a whole group of people who can help you. And you've got to you've got to take that leap. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I'll go to the the society. Do they know if the one in my city is good? Because I don't really like the one in my city. Or if I should go to Vancouver. They're just go with. Go with, go ask the lawyer or someone that's close to you that would know. Okay. 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 Ask someone I trust then. Okay. Okay. So. James, do you have any senses on this? No. I had a long talk with her. I just knew that she was, um, she takes on a lot of energy from other people. Like you met, you've already yeah. mentioned that at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It's very hard. Um, it's very hard for me because I just absorb it. So what do I do about that? Well, the I exercise like I gave you in the beginning, mm-hmm. that's a really good one for grounding in. And for you, you may need to do it for five, maybe even 10 good deep breaths. Mm-hmm. And as you let those breaths out, let out that tension. I know it's really hard for you. They're showing me that you are in a web, within a web, within a web. I mean, yeah. you're... you're no you're, way out. Yeah. And that's why you really need to start digging in and asking for help. Okay. And... That's the only way you're going to get out of this. As far as the feelings of other people, don't let what they're feeling influence what you need to do. And honestly, go buy a nice piece of tourmaline. Tourmaline is really great for grounding and for absorbing excessive energy. Okay. And the exercise I gave you is a really good exercise. You just may need to do it for a longer period of time. Mm-hmm. Another good ex- kids? Wait, what about my kids? And, like, how am I supposed to do that with, like, cause with their dad and they have to see him still? And how do I work that out? That's legal. Yeah. Oh, it's complicated. It's yep. very okay. complicated. You're... You're in a mess of webs, honey. Yeah. And you need to get past what you're feeling and all these distractions to really start digging in and asking for help. And what's yeah. even more important is that you need to listen to that help. Because the woman behind me says you have a very bad tendency to ask for help, but if it doesn't give you the outcome you want, you have a tendency to fluff it off. And you really need to listen to the help being offered to you right now because you don't you don't have a whole lot to stand on right now. Mm-hmm. Cindy, write it down like a, a to do list down. when you when people yeah. are offering you help. Write it down as a to do list of things okay. that you, you need to do and mm-hmm. stick to it and cross them off. See, because okay. that way you're going to make yourself go through it. Yeah, it's just like my husband's energy is so strong. It just makes it very hard to think. So I guess that's why I have to get out of here to be able to be clear and yeah. follow a to-do list. Go into the bathtub. 
fill it up and submerge yourself to the point where your face is above the water so you can breathe and your ears are covered. Okay. And just allow yourself to be in that moment. And then just let, don't get out of the tub until all the water has gone down the drain. And send everything with that water down the drain. Okay. It's really going to be a matter of you really taking yourself on. And you're going to have to look at your babies and go, I'm going to make me better so that I can take Mm -hmm. care of you. And that's really going to have to be your motivation. I'm going to make me better so I can take care of you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Wasn't that uplifting? Take a deep breath, hon. Big hug. And I'm sending you lots of blessings, okay? Okay. And we can always talk. And you can always call Skeeter, too. Um, You can send her an email at bluemoonweaver at gmail.com is that right yep okay blue and i can get it what? to you cindy um blue okay. moon weaver like weaving at gmail.com okay. Okay. and if if you need any help or if her phone number you can get it from me okay okay boss okay thanks S- sleep well okay. thanks skeeter so we got about Thank 15 you. minutes to go. We have one, two, three more, four more in line up here. I'm going to uh, go to Irene. Hi, how are you? Hello, Irene. Hey, how are you guys doing? Oh, Kevin. How you doing, bud? Hey, good, good. Good, good. Irene, Irene's having a hard time hearing on the phone. Yeah, probably. It's, uh, it's, it, it is kind of awkward to hear. Uh, tell her to go turn on the computer and listen to it there. Uh, do you want a, uh, a reading then from Skeeter? Sure. Skeeter, this is Kevin. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Doing very well, thank you. What can I do for you tonight? Um, did you want something you just in general, or did you have yeah, a specific probably, question? Uh, probably something just in general. Okay. Sorry, James. I'm shuffling my cards. I'll be done in just a second. After the general one, Kevin, you should ask Skeeter about those shadows that walk from walk through your house. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, because she can she can actually find out who they are and probably name them. Um, one of them's definitely a man, and he belongs to the house. Okay. Okay. And he says he's not leaving. <laughs> it's his house. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. But, cool. but he'll share name? a beer with you anytime you want. That makes sense, actually. What's his name? I'm not getting one right now. Okay. We'll come back. Hey, if you want to do the thing on the house, you don't have to give me a reading. I I kind of like that one, too. <laughs> So you don't want your reading anymore? Oh, if you already set up, then yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, a lot of what you're reading, your story, I asked for your story. Um, it's about self-development, self-growth, um, making some life changes and expanding beyond your comfort zone. There's some opportunities coming up that you're going to have to be able to say, yes, I can do that. Even if you have no bloody idea how. Okay. Um, Because you're going to want to take advantage of that growth. And if there's an opportunity that comes up, and especially if it comes with training, say, yes, I can do that. And then once you're in, go, okay, show me how you would like me to do it. Okay. And don't shoot yourself down. Don't tell yourself, I can't do this. What did I get myself into? Really stand on the fact that you do have the ability to do this. Okay. Um, a lot of this is about self-confidence for some reason. 
and allowing yourself to really uh, really shine in what you do. Um, the ghosts have now figured out that I can see them and they're talking to me. <laughs> so we're going to leave your reading at that. I apologize. If you have any questions, feel free to ask real quick. Oh, that's, but, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the energies around you were like, hey, wait, she saw so-and-so. Can she see us too? Yes, I can. <laughs> um, the The really interesting thing it's almost like they're coming from somewhere else, a lot of them. Um, there, there's the one gentleman I told you. It's his house. He's staying there. He doesn't want to go. Um, there's two... Uh, what? Oh, can you give an, an age? Like, what a, What era would he be from? Like, recent or... Um, or like- I'm seeing... He's definitely got a style of someone from the 50s, 60s. Um, those pleated, um, the, the pleated leisure pants with the, the, the stripes and it's almost like a grid style shirt with the wide collar and yeah, definitely late fifties, early sixties is when he was in his prime. He died. Oh, late seventies. Okay. Early eighties. That that kind of sounds like the original owner. So it's it's he's like it's my place. I'll share a beer with you, but I'm not going. Um, hmm. <laughs> um, there's some others who come in and out, and it's, it's either you. You and someone else or someone else in the family. I'm going to say it's you and someone else in the family are both. You tend to brush it off more about feeling things. It's kind of like, oh, well, that's just that. That's just my imagination. You know, you try to rationalize it a bit more. Um, I'm seeing a much almost like a younger person who's also sensitive to these things. And it's kind of like you guys are like inadvertently drawing these things to you from around the neighborhood. Um, there's um, two women in the room. One is um, early 80s. She's definitely from the early 80s, early 1980s. Um, She looks to be fairly old. She got insulted by that. I apologize. She she doesn't look that old. She looks great. Um, (laughs) But um, she's... She says she's associated with the house, but she doesn't belong to the house. Like he, the gentleman is. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a woman with her, not of the same era. She's definitely, I don't know how early the area in your area was colonized, but she's definitely from that earlier, earlier colonization period. Be around the eighteen okay. hundreds. Yeah. Late eighteen, middle to late eighteen hundreds. Yeah. She's saying mid eighteen hundreds. Okay. Um, but she's she's just drawn to the energy in the house. Um, they're telling me about creepers. That there's. Um, some energies that like to it's almost like they crawl along the edges of the wall or along the edge of the ceiling on the wall and they like to lay just just high enough to where you can catch them but low enough to where you really can't quite make them out and those are the ones who you feel the cold spots or like the high static energy 
Um, they're the ones who you think you hear. Um, if you don't hear this, that's good. But if you do hear, it's almost like a, a like a scratchy, almost like marbles being pushed up against something. It's a weird sound. It's it's like marbles being held under your palm and kind of ground in. Is the best way I can describe the sound. Um, okay. But it's it's a weird sound. Footprint footsteps is another sound that they would possibly make. Um, they're not negative. They're not happy, happy, joy, joy either. But they're not negative. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Um, <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> The, the ladies, no. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they, they were asked. They, they, they said they said they know I'm the one who crosses people. So they asked if I could cross them, and I told them we'll see. Um, but um, for you, it's it's really just kind of setting a barrier and a boundary of you know what this is my home. Um. For some odd reason, I want to give the one gentleman an R name. Okay, an R I'm, name. It's like Richard or Rick or some... I can't say it's for sure that, but it's definitely... He's pushing me towards the R's. Yeah. I wouldn't know what it is anymore. Um, but he's... Um, he's like, I'm not leaving. This is my house. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. It can be your house, but you have to share it with the living and be respectful of the living. Um, the other things you can you can lay down the law. This is my house. Please be respectful of me and my family, and go somewhere else. You don't you don't have you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Yeah. And and just do it respectfully and honestly, and and let them know you're you're scaring me a little bit. Could you please? Move on. Yeah. Cool. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't bother me in the least for the that kind of stuff. Okay. But don't be afraid to to just say, you know what? If you want something, let me know. If you're just here to be weird, go away. <laughs> yeah. Pretend you're the barkeep. You know what? If you're buying drinks, great. If not, go away. Time for you yeah. to move on. Okay. Um. We're coming up. What, James? We're coming up to a break in about two minutes. Um, okay. I just want. I'll give you a heads up when I get, we have to leave. And uh, Kevin and everybody else holding online, it's a seven minute break, so time to have a drink of water, powder your nose. But Kevin, I want you to hang on because okay. I think um, Skeeter can actually cross over those two ladies, and we can do that on, actually right on the air. Okay. Okay. And that way you have two less bothering you. Well, they, they don't really bother me. It's, uh, other than one thing that I already took care of with uh, with one guy that was in here. Um, other than that, the place is quite comfortable. Okay. How did you get rid of another guy? He was just doing all sorts of malicious things, and I tried, you know, doing the whole kindness and thing and all that, and I was falling asleep, and he was doing usual weird stuff where um, it was almost like he was trying to pressure me into things and um, I just said, you know, you think you have some power? Check this out. And I became 10 times bigger than him and I told him to back off and leave me alone and hasn't been bothering me since in the last four years or so. Excellent. All right. We're going to come back with Kevin and his ghosts right after this. Which is going to be good. I tell you. Hi there, this is Dave Scott, and I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, 
ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at spacedoutradio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. Hi there, this is your psychic medium, Joanna, and I would love it if you would join us every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. With host James Tyson, we'll bring you personal psychic messages on two mediums and a large. Questions about love, life, career changes. We would love it if you would come and join us live. Call in and listen in for the experience. Allow us to open the doors to your other side. Two mediums and a large. Heard only on Space Out Weekend at spacedoutradio.com. Attention, Spaced Out Radio listeners. For only $5 a month, you can join Spaced Out Radio Space Travelers. Your membership at spacedoutradio.com will give you access to private fan area on the website, get you a monthly newsletter, draws for monthly swag, and a whole lot more. Sign up today to become a part of the Spaced Out Radio experience. From coast to coast to coast, Black Light Uncharted is taking on the paranormal across Canada. From ghostly hauntings to the UFOs flying above in conjunction with MUFON Canada, we are closely investigating what's going on in the northern skies and checking out the apparitions that walk among us. Check out our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. We want to know your thoughts, we want to hear your experiences, and we want you to share your stories. The answers are out there, and we intend to find them. This is Eric Markham, news editor for the Spaced Out Radio's The Encounter Online. We have put together a great team of writers and journalists from all over the world to bring you top quality paranormal stories, from alien encounters to the latest conspiracies. You won't find any of that fake news here. True stories and top notch reporting as we look to bring these experiences to the mainstream. The Encounter online only at spacedoutradio.com. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream. Stories so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. Find yourself constantly looking up in the sky, looking for answers? Have you had extraterrestrial contact? Are you an abductee? Looking for answers to your experiences? Hi there, I'm R. Keith Andrews, Spaced Out Radio's resident ET expert. Join me live the first Friday of every month where I take questions from the Spaced Out Radio chat room and help you understand those from the far off world. It's two hours of knowledge every experiencer should listen to. Hope to see you there. Have you had an experience you can't explain? Had a run-in with ghosts, maybe Bigfoot, or seen lights in the sky? Hi, I'm Mike Schmidt from the SOR Sight Lines. I'm here to investigate your sighting. Head to spacedoutradio.com and fill out a report on the sight lines. All your information is 100% confidential, and I will help you figure out what you've been seeing. File your report, and let's find out the answers together. The third Monday of every month, Spaced Out Radio is going to bring you a different look at everything paranormal. Welcome to The Reporters. Jim Mallard, Vanessa Hogel, Denise Garcia, and Christina George join me, Dave Scott, for a look at the weird and strange from the other side of the microphone. We'll break down ghosts, UFOs, cryptids, and the people investigating them. The paranormal media has never been heard like this. Come listen to The Reporters. Hey everybody, this is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm here to bring you the Webster Phenomena every Saturday night, live at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for aliens and extraterrestrials, well, we've got them. 
Big and tall, short and small, you're bound to find what you're looking for. So join me on the Webster Phenomena, right here on Spaced Out Radio. Hi there, this is Jolene with Reveal at Reiki and Readings, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivulet r and r or my facebook page rivulet r and r to set up an appointment for relaxation reiki or readings no matter where you are it's time for you to make time for you you hear footsteps in the empty room above you a rocking chair begins rocking by itself don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night reach for spirit story box the iPhone app The Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Tonight's edition of Spaced Out Weekend is brought to you by SpacedOutRadio.com, where you can now sign up to become a Space Traveler member. Now, for the final time tonight, here's Spaced Out Weekend's James Tyson. Welcome back, everybody, to Spaced Out Radio, and I'm here with Spaced Out Weekend. I want to thank our famous, or infamous, no, he's a really good guy, Ron Bumblefoot Thal. He is the man behind the music for Spaced Out Radio and Spaced Out Weekend. Please go look him up on Facebook. Go look him up on Twitter. See what Ron does to help other young musicians around the world by giving back and um, supporting them, supporting them on their talents. And if you know Ron and we know Dave and his his fixation with Guns N' Roses, um, Ron was the guy who took over from Slash for 13 years and is now with Art of Anarchy and having a heck of a good time bouncing around the world with them. Remember, the first Friday of every month is our Keith Andrews Night on Spaced Out Radio. And Keith is our resident ET expert, and he brings with him the ET experience with 50 years of contact. I wonder if that's all in a row. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> so, and I remember the last Friday of the month is the SOR roundtable where Dave gets a bunch of hoodlums together and tries to trick us with questions. Okay, it's basically only tricks me with questions. Uh, the rest of the guys seem to get it and being on that sunday night at midnight stay on spreaker and go over to s4 and that's exactly how you spell it s4 with eric cooper of forest moon forest moon paranormal and uh see what's happening there tonight now eric and the boys will carry the conversation on of the supernatural the paranormal uh, which includes anything from bigfoot to um ufos to what the heck people are doing out there trying to do paranormal investigations and uh, running around like chickens with their heads cut off. I tell you, these guys uh, at Forest Moon, they'll, they, they don't pull the punches when they're, if they don't like something, you'll know it because Eric will rant on it on, on S4. So again, that's at midnight on Spreaker. Go to S4 with Eric Cooper and the boys and see what's going on there tonight now while we were before we went to the break we were with a fellow named kevin who doesn't live too far from me a buddy of mine and um skeeter has identified three um spirits in the home actually while we're on the break she uh kevin told her about another two and she's identified a, a first nations or american indian woman and her son or child that walk through the house and kevin says when he sees them, the house behind him and the house in front of him, you know, the owners will get together and said, yeah, we saw them walk through again today, but they, they're not residual. They're actually real. And, uh, that's kind of cool. It's, it's a bit of a, a, a bit of a uh, path that was there, uh, a long time ago. And these spirits are still walking down to the water to get going. Okay. Skeeter. Um, I guess these ladies would like to move on. Yes, they would. I'm getting my notebook out. And on the break, we determined that the lady from the 1800s is of 
uh, Indo-Canadian heritage, uh, which lined up exactly with what um, this part of Canada was. It's the inlet. If you think of a fjord, we are at the very end of the inlet, which is the Vancouver Harbor. And it was all um, lumber mills here. And um, the late 1800s to the turn of the century, a lot of uh, people working in the lumber here were from India. And um, in fact, there's a couple of monuments where there was a big train disaster here. I think six of the boys got killed. But uh, yeah, it fits perfect with the history of this location. So do your thing. Skeeter, and, <laughs> and if we can get a name, that would be great. Okay. Um, I can't pronounce her name. Does um, it ask her if her middle name starts with a K? Um, does your, do you start with the middle K? Yes. Good. Okay, she's Seek. And the first name is like Padma... Parma. Parma? It's really no. beautiful. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, the uh, with the Sikh religion, the male's middle names are usually Singh, and the woman's middle name is I think it's K U A R, but I can't remember. Yeah, it's after a uh, uh, religious leaders. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that confirms her identity as being a uh, uh, um, from India. So that's very cool. Yeah. Ask her how she passed. Um, the there was heavy metals in the water. Oh. And it it ruined her um, internal organs. They yeah, shut down. A lot of the times back in the day, they would use lead pipes. Is lead like what like real lead pipes? So yeah, you would. Um, yeah, that would be not good. So she says she had a good life, but it wasn't as long as she would have liked. Next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she says she's already enjoyed the view of what's coming. Oh, That's good. why she's excited to go. Oh, good. So, um, and the other woman... I'm I'm asking for a name, and it's almost like Emily. I want to I'm going to stick with Emily because she says he called me Emmy. Yeah, that would that makes sense then. Um, but she says they're they're both packed. She says we're both packed and ready. <laughs> um, quit delaying. So. Let's go. <laughs> yes. So they're they're ready. Um I'm going to ask everybody, all of our listeners to please put your your good energy um out there to help these two lovely ladies cross over so that they they can continue their journeys. Um wow, they're already pushing. I'm going to open myself up. I'm going to allow these energies to use my energy and cross over into the light and it's it's just like riding in a lift or or being pulled up a tree like the pulley system when they would levy things up and down so it's just like that and okay they're they're like we already see it (laughs) um so I'm going to open myself up. I apologize for the little bit of quiet while I focus. And... Great Spirit, please guide me and protect me as I do this. And I feel them... Okay. Both women are crossing through now. Um... Oh, 
for Emma, it was a... Uh, I can't tell exactly who was there to meet her, but she was really happy to see them. Um, for Palam, Palame, it was... She's make, She's asking if anyone wants to go with her. It's okay, honey. You don't have to take care of everyone. You can just go. She's got family waiting for it. It looks like a husband, son's grandfather. It's a lot of men. She says that's why she was there, was to take care of the men. Oh, very cool. So, Kevin, you're going to have to clean up the house yourself. <laughs> Both spirits have crossed over now. Very cool. So, oh, um, that's two less spirits for you, love. So, now you have room to put clothes in your closet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and someone tagged in on the end and crossed over. I don't know who it was, but it it was another female energy who jumped in with Palame. Okay, cool. That is kind of cool. It's not like the time machine where if they mix up on the other side, they're going to be half of a fly or half of a... No, 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 no. no. Um, (laughs) What what about those black things on the wall? Those are the creepers. Yeah, I could get rid of those or do they go off by themselves? Do you want me to get rid of them? Does it take long? It just... um the old guy is telling me it'd probably take a while. Okay. We can do it some other but time. But they're, they're, um, they're elementals from oh, the land. Just, from the land. Those kind of weird things. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, we can deal with those some other time. And Kevin just has to keep a heads up if he gets offered a, a uh, job that he's not really sure he can do to take it anyway and train himself up Learn as to you get go. that done. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. How was that, Kevin? Good. Yeah. That was great, man. Oh, you're very welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Have a good night. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. That is very cool. Okay, we have Peggy, and then we go to young Chris, and then over to somebody named Amanda. Um, Peggy. Hello. Wake Wake up. You prairie girl. <laughs> oh, I'm not sleeping. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> yeah. Any ghosts in your house you'd like moved? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't think so. Um, yeah. Go for Skeeter, Peggy. All right. Um, okay. Well, I had an event in my life that has caused me to withdraw from my spiritual gifts. And this last year... Um, the heaviness of this curse, I'll say, has kind of lifted for me. So I've been really um, welcoming back my gifts, and they've been slowly coming back, but I really want to engage them back and maybe even make, I don't want to say like I make a living off it, but make it my life and take that power back that I used to really enjoy having. Um, okay. Um, I got two messages off of that. Okay. One of them, the first one was practice, 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 practice. Okay. Um, they showed me for you, it's really building up your intuition. So playing, um, you know, those match games where you guess where the card is, but really make yourself concentrate and you have to mix the cards up again. You can't just play the match game normally. You have right. to actually find the cards. Um, working on anything that forces you to guess where the nut is or where the prize is or whatever it is. Matching things up, answering the, guessing whose name it is before you answer the phone or check your caller ID. Really building up your confidence. Mm-hmm. The other person said, watch your ego. Yes. Because 
if you get into this again and you let your ego get ahead of you again, they're going to shut you down. Okay. Don't get cocky like you did last time, is what I'm hearing. That's interesting. Okay. Um, they said last time you got... The, the problem with last time is that you let fear and your ego get in the way. So be very careful of that this time. Okay. Um, one of the really cool things that they are coming back and saying is, is as you move forward, just practice. Don't worry about making this a, a money-making thing yet. Um, I myself, I did this for years and years before I started charging, and I only started charging because people told me to. Mm -hmm. And then I only took tips. I don't always charge for certain people. I don't know why, but Spirit comes through and says, don't charge. Cool. I like that. Um. So I, I'm very careful about making this my living. I'm being told I have to do this now. Um, uh, I don't know if you've listened to the shows, but on one of the other shows, I, I told James I'm no longer a seamstress because I had an argument with Spirit about, well, seamstress is what I do for a living. That's how I care for my family. And Spirit said, you are going to be doing this for a living now. And oh, literally totally set a blanket weird. on fire so that I would know for sure this was the end. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was very interesting. I, I finally said, yes, whatever you say, and you win. And life has been better since then. So, understand that as you're growing, listen to those cues. Don't be argumentative like I was. I was argumentative. But listen to them and be respectful. Okay. Because as they lead you and guide you forward, there's a lot of humbling experiences that are going to come your way. Mm -hmm. And they're not to tear you down. They're to help you see what's in you that you need to take time to heal and love and grow so that you can help it in others. Um, okay. One of my, they're, they're having me bring this up right now. And one of my favorite quotes is from one of my heroes as a kid, Ernest Hemingway. Live a life worth writing about. I've, I'm able to pull on a lot of life experience because of that quote. I went out and I lived a very active and interesting life so that as I come across people, I can I cannot just use my empathic abilities, or my sympathetic abilities, but I can actually connect with them and actually feel what they're going through, which allows me to see the entire web, and I call it a web, it's it's that rippling effect and all the ties tied to it so I can guide people. And as spirit works through you and guides you, they're going to introduce you to this and you're going to learn how these things tie in and guide you. And it's very yeah. humbling. And mm -hmm. it's a lot of, there's, I think I have prayed more in the last five years than I have my entire life. And it's not necessarily to any one thing as it is all things. Because I feel so humbled in the moment and I'm asking for the guidance that I need to do what is right versus what I want. Right. So these are a lot of the lessons that are going to be pushing and coming through you. You have a lot of really good potential. That's why they're they're kind of coming down on you right now that they have a mouthpiece to go, get her, get her, let her know we're coming through and there's going to be these lessons and let her know that it's going to be hard, but the reward is going to be amazing. Right on. Cool. It anything is else, cool. Anything else, Peggy? You want to... Um, uh, see what comes through if a great grandmother shows up and says hi or anything. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Um, they said no dead relatives for you, but there is a guide that you should be turning to and looking to to help you as you move forward. Oh, and 
he is stepping forward and he's showing he's uh, he's not one of the angels I thought at first maybe he might be an angel um wow that's a new one um do you follow um any specific religion um I'm going to say no, because the more I study them, the more I find the similarities in all of them. So I kind of, I don't know, things appear to me when I need to see them or hear them. And I find, uh, mm, I don't know, I can't really answer that. (laughs) Did you get Um, Buddha? I'm getting Buddha and I'm getting Ganesh. Okay, it would be Ganesh. Yeah, he's so, okay. He, he's come to me a lot of meditation, so that's really great. That's really great. Yeah, so Ganesh is definitely coming through. Buddha's coming through. Ganesh says, talk to me, Mama. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to cry. That's so great. <laughs> so, I was just going to imagine him because he's so amazing, right? Like, why would he yeah. come see me? <laughs> yeah. He says because you have the potential to do what he teaches. Which is oh. that that karmic balance, that helping, that assistance, that aid. So follow him. Um, look into his parents, um, Shiva yes. and Abrati. Uh, yes. So look at those as well, because that's really where you're going to get a lot of your guidance from. Wow. And Buddha says, breathe. He says you get really amped up quick. Don't forget to take a moment and breathe. Hold that lotus position and breathe. And don't feed peanuts to my idol. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what they just said. Oh, yeah. It's probably for something very rude. <laughs> I don't need Dave... Writing me a nasty note saying, I know what you did, and I know that we got a fee for it. So, no. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Peggy, that's kind of cool. That is so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. No crying. There's no crying on Spaced Out Weekend. You save that for Spaced Out Radio with Dave. Um, (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of cool. Very, very it cool. It is cool. All righty. Mm. I'm going to kick you Alrighty. out now, Peggy. Oh. Thank you for hanging out for so long. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Christopher, come on in. Chris Hi, Christopher. Gopher. Christopher, come in. Oh. Christopher, wipe your feet. Chris, wipe your feet, Christopher. Okay, he's still on mute. Um, uh, you hear me? So, no, no, we don't hear you. Hello. 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 How are you? Happy Mother's Day before I begin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, and and same to you. Oh, thanks. Just, you were a mom. <laughs> um, okay, go, Christopher. There's two behind you, and then me. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I've I've been wondering about. His connection I've had with my like couple weeks ago, and I had uh, computer issues, and I've taken to this place I've known of, a place called Roca Grimalda, and I've been doing work about another place as well. It's all coins, I have a lot of synergies. Synergies. So, no, I know comments. what he's talking about. Okay, cool. And- they're they're going. It's you, the root digger. Um, <laughs> me and the guy. It's love you because we all we all refer to you as um, the one who digs, the one who looks for roots. Mm-hmm. Um, the the thing is that, and they're saying that yes, you are seeing these things, and these are accurate. But collect them. Don't read into them. Okay. Um, The thing for you is that you, they said you are amazing at what you do. The fact that you could, I mean, I would want to play six degrees to to Kevin Bacon with you any day because you could tie any movie I gave you to him. 
Do you have it. you have the ability to tie things together in okay. such ways that they do make sense? Okay. But it's because you want them to. Okay. So be very careful about applying your will to these synergies and synchronicities. Okay. Because you are amazing. You have this amazing ability to see where this root leads to that root and how that root leads to that root and that leads to that and this leads to that. Okay. So be careful about the fact that you are are gifted in this and able to see the ripples and where they're going and affecting, but also be careful not to your will on them. Does that make sense? Yes. Can I ask a question? My fault. I'm sorry, honey. Uh, so, um, here's your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just distracted. Sorry. Um, it is amazing. Uh, and when you had that con- Concussion a few couple of days ago. Yes, I had such bad, bad headache, and in, something energetically happened with me. Also, you know those manifestations that I've had issues with. Yeah, gone. Really? You had such a major cleansing when you got yeah. conquered. Yeah. Yeah. As um um. Oh, who's that lovely lady who who is on before us? Oh, Elizabeth Anglin. Elizabeth. Yeah. Elizabeth explained it best as she said, "Somebody, when I banged my head, it knocked the cap off and let a lot of stuff out." Oh, that's what that was. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I wondered that when you were okay. As soon as I signed on, it hit me and and. Uh, I went straight towards your profile for some reason to ask you if you were okay for some reason like I needed to. Huh. Interesting. You get you're you're um making people sick, Skeeter. Uh no so, not on purpose. <laughs> yeah. No on purpose. I I consider Skeeter a friend. Well, oh yeah, good. we talk all the time. You talk yeah, all the she- time. Okay, yes. Christopher, We're I'm friends. going to Amanda now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'll, we, I'll talk to you on Facebook later, then, Skeeter. Okay, okay, talk to you thanks, later, Chris. Thanks, Christopher. Amanda, right. you you have right. two behind you now. We have West Virginia and Ohio behind you, Amanda. And Mountain Mama. Yes, you know, so Virginia let's Mountain get Mountain going. Mama, my terrible joke. Yes, dear. <laughs> so hey, hopefully... Hi, Skeeter. Oh, by the way, hi, Ron. There, I said it. Hopefully he heard that. Um, I'm hoping is a certain person is going to come through, but if they don't, they don't. I'm wondering if my biological dad actually has anything to say to me right now, if at all. Um, let me see who's wanting to talk. Give me just a moment. I apologize. Okay. That's okay. Um, there's a male energy coming forward. Um, he's kind of standing off to the side right now. He's kind of making sure if I see him or not. There's someone else behind him moving forward. He's they're, they're saying he's shy. A very reserved gentleman. Um, kind of protective of who and what he is. Um, does does his first name start with the letter G? I heard a yes and a no, and I'm asking for clarification. It's a no. The gentleman behind it's it's a no because that's not the name he went by. His given name, yes, but not the name he went by. 
So I hope it makes sense in its own nonsensical way. Kind of yes and kind of no. Well, he says... Um, Okay. I don't know if he had a nickname. He says it was... um, It was a name given to him by friends, so I'm going to say it's a nickname. And... I don't, I don't, I don't know, know what it would have been. Military or not, but it's almost like it, it was a rank thing. You know how you you got nicknames for <laughs> or your last name or whatever. Did um, I know this guy, know. Amanda? <laughs> he says she didn't know him very well. Did you know him, Amanda? Not physically. He actually, I was adopted, and he passed on um, before my biological mom had found me. But I have, um, I was going through a tough time, and his death wasn't wasn't a very nice one. And um, I was going through a tough time with my biological mom, so there was kind of a strange connection there for for a while between him and I. I focused a lot on him for several years when I went into depression, but um, every year around the same time, I always wonder if he pops up without me knowing it, if there's anything he ever wanted to say to me, or maybe he doesn't, maybe he doesn't have anything to say at all, but I always get curious around this time of year. Um, for him, you're more of a fascination. He because that. Has he not crossed over? He's lingering. And what does that Um, mean? He's still tied to this this place. It's kind of like he he knows he can go to the blue room. Mm -hmm. He knows he can check things out, but he's he's sorting things out for himself. Okay, that's why he has that personality then. This guy, the fascination with Amanda more than love and light. Yeah. Um, he, whatever he died of, I'm, it's like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I've got a lot of pressure on my chest. I feel like there's something in my throat. Um, yep. Oh, I've it, got goosebumps. Um, it, it, I know how he passed on. Solid in my throat and chest, upper chest. How did he pass on? Want me on, to tell man? you how he passed on? Yeah, he committed suicide and he drowned himself in the ocean. Oh, that would do it. That would explain what. I'm doing. Um, Does he understand it when I say to him, "I knew that I know he didn't mean to do that." Yeah, he does because he was. He was intoxicated at the time. Yeah, okay, you're definitely got my dog. <clears throat> um, and it wasn't even meant to be a suicide. It was. It should have been labeled an accidental. Yeah. Uh, you but definitely because, have my dog. But because of the circumstances going on in his life, it was labeled suicide. Yeah. Is that why he's not crossing? No, I know. Skeeter? That's a big part of why he's not crossing. Because he thinks he's going to get in trouble. Well, he says I'm not a big believer in heaven or hell. No. But he's he's not a betting man. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Tell him it's all good. I I, I am. I'm, I'm letting him know. But he, he when he looks at Amanda. For him, it's kind of like he sees this thing that he helped create. And for him, it's like the only really good thing in his life, and he never got to meet it. No, he's met me in other ways. (laughs) Maybe not physically, but he's met me in other ways. that's, That's what's important to him is that he didn't get to meet you in life. There, there's meeting things in spirit. I, I I got to meet one of my heroes, John Denver, in spirit, and it was cool. But I 
it would have been more intense meeting him in life. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there's there's a difference between meeting things in spirit and meeting things in the flesh when you are of flesh. And for him, he really didn't know about you until it was too late. And his he wasn't exactly in a good place. I know. So I, know. I forgave him a long. Does he know that I forgave him a long time ago? But I still kind of hold on to him too. <laughs> he he gets that you forgave him, but that's not what's holding him back. It's him forgiving okay. himself. Oh, he needs to. He he needs to forgive himself. Ask him. Can you ask him what the one thing he and I have in common is? I'm just curious what your question is going to be. I think I already know the answer, but I'm really curious what he might say to that. He says you're both stubborn as mules. Hmm. <laughs> it's a, a, a hobby. How about a hobby we have in common? I'm just curious if there's service of this. Um, He's trying to show me something. And I'm trying to follow him. Careful, Skeeter. He loves women. <laughs> no, he he's being very respectful right now. He he is he is touching my arm because he's trying really hard to show me what it is that you do share. And it's weird. I the weird words I got were grease monkey, and I have no idea if that applies or not. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Um. I'm not getting it. I'm telling him I apologize, but he wants me to know that you two do have the same eye color. And he hopes that that means something to you. Yeah, I've always liked my eye color. It's the one thing. I don't look like him. I look like my biological mom, but my dad, God help me for saying this about my own biological dad, but my biological dad was hot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I got to see a picture of him once and I was like, damn, I can have turned out like you. And he'd get women. He'd get a lot of women. But that's not the hobby we have in common. No. <laughs> I was wondering, I was wondering, does it, do you get the feeling at all like it might have been a camera he was trying to show you? A camera? Yeah. No, that's definitely not what he was showing me. You stinker, Dad. Really? He was showing me something a lot more hands-on, a lot more Hmm. physical than photography. Because he says you like to take things apart as much as he did and put them back together. No, I don't, Dad. I hate his Lego growing up. (laughs) (laughs) I hate being taking things apart and putting them back together because I never can get put back together and I get frustrated. All that nerd. Well, we'll just leave that as it yeah. is. Maybe when okay. you get older, you'll be tearing apart diesel engines. <laughs> Motorcycles. Who knows? I've got, I was kind of I've, hoping, I've, he, I was kind of hoping he'd say a camera's in your future, darling. <sighs> it's coming. It's coming. That's what I was kind of hoping no. for. He I, um, passed on May 20th of 83, so that's why... Around this time, I always get curious if he pops around in my life again. He's I haven't felt him around for a very long way. time. Okay. Okay. I've got um, I've got two callers stacked behind you, and uh, with about fifteen minutes left. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Appreciate it. Okay, Thank man. Thanks for hanging on so long. Bye bye. Okay, I'm going to a uh, caller from Ohio. The 614 area code. Hello? Hello. What's your name? Skeeter, what's yours? No, not you. (laughs) Uh, Is uh, somebody with a 614 area code, Ohio? That might be me. That would be you. What's your name, sir? And it's definitely not in Ohio. Oh, hold on. (laughs) It's Robert White. Oh heck! Australia? That's that's a country code at the front end one, of that puppy. Yeah, six one's a oh. good code. <laughs> good day. Good afternoon, sir. Good day. Good day, mate. Get a fed How's into the day. Good. 
How's it going with you? <laughs> How are you going, mate? Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Skeeter. You are very naughty, and you should not do that again. <laughs> okay. I will not do that again. <laughs> Bad girl. Okay, I Robert. I promise. <laughs> Time is a ticking. What you got? Yeah, it is. Um, I'm just wanting to find out if I'm heading in, in the right direction now from the previous call that I made ages ago. Oh. They said you're starting to get a grasp on it, but you still got Pardon? a little bit more trimming okay. and grooming All to right. do. Okay. Um, they said as far as your spiritual path, you need to not be so persnickety. <laughs> All right. So um, don't don't be as um. Don't be as well, pretty Detailed. much as anal as possible. Yeah, anal. As I am. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I was trying to be polite. <laughs> ah, dear. <laughs> okay, I can definitely do that. I can be less less of that. I wasn't sure if the noise from the traffic going by was coming through the speaker either. If I've been muted muted or not. No, it's fine. So, I've been, no, you're good. I've been walking back and forth around the backyard. Sweet. <sighs> Spending $5 a minute on this phone call. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> should have used Skype, young man. Um, well, the kids are upstairs, so they watch uh, it on the um, TV. Oh, got it. But so, yeah, they're watching The Wiggles or something. Um, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> But as far as your path goes, you're you're kind of on it. You've just got to right. kind of stop trying to micromanage it so much mm-hmm. and let it okay. flow more. Right. Cool. All right. Um, the the stones are definitely something very good for you. Yeah. And hello to everybody in the chat rooms, both of them, Speaker Yay. and FB. Yay! <laughs> uh, Robert, have you ever seen something uh, that you thought might have been a UFO or Bigfoot or a sea monster? Well, I have seen a couple of different things in the sky, as well as 40 years ago, when I was about four years old, um, in my parents' house, there was, like, shadow figures that would... Hmm. Uh, I, I was ill at the time. And I saw them raise up above the foot of the bed that I was in, and they took shape of Australian animals. And they pretty much did a pantomime type thing to, I don't know whether they were trying to make me laugh or just entertain me or what, but Hmm. I never got any bad feelings from them. Yeah, it was Aboriginal. It was an Aboriginal yeah. thing, and you should actually look up the stories associated with those animals. Mm-hmm. Was that from the land? In, yeah, that uh, was that was even? elemental. Very cool. And the um, yeah. the you, the things you saw in the sky. What were those, Skeeter? I don't know. They're not telling me. Oh well, let's not push One it. One was up it, in the far north. And one was here in where I am now. So, yeah. That would be interesting. <laughs> it's funny. They said, you saw nothing. Oh, that's what they said. <laughs> yeah. No, no. You saw nothing. You saw nothing. You saw nothing. Do you know Solretta? Or Solrita? Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, Robert? Is a, Pardon? She, is a lady uh, named Solrita. And I'm trying to remember Solrita's last name. She's a um, psychic and a UFO um, person down under there. Uh, I've got to remember okay. where she's from. If you look up, I'm gonna. I think she. I've got her on Facebook here, and uh, she's really connected with that kind of thing. Uh, Solrita okay. Anteria. She is a uh, young lady who lives, oh, I can't remember if it's near Sydney. She's in Melbourne. Um, And, uh, yeah, she's really, really switched on with both um, psychic and ufology. And she's actually just posted today of uh, 
um, part two of four of May 2007, uh, filmed by her fiance, a bunch of a UFO fleet over Melbourne. So uh, if you go go follow her on Facebook, and she's very mm-hmm. very like as I say, very connected to those things. Wonderful psychic and Where's has been visited son? by okay. um, uh, ETs ever since she was a little kid. Solrita and Teria. All right. Um, All right. Yeah. Well, we'll she's, definitely go and have a look at her. Yeah, she switched on, and maybe she can uh, she can trick them into telling you who they were. <laughs> so yeah. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, they're, yeah. I don't want, we went through this a couple of times where we start pushing it, and all of a sudden my computer shuts down and restarts. And it's a hint. Yeah. So I'm trying not to put do that anymore. <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, it was yeah. definitely, um, it wasn't um, any of the higher ones. It was lower ones who were navigating those ships. Oh. All right. So oh. I'm, I asked if it was blues, and they said no. I asked if it was grays, and I got a bit of silence. Yeah. Oh. And I didn't want to answer. It was the lower ones. So it was Kiwis. Um, the <laughs> it was the Sorry. tall ones. Oh, it was the it tall, was the tall grays. Tall grays? Okay. Tall grays. Oh, cruising. All right. Well, that's good enough. I don't want to push that because I hate it when this system shuts down. Yeah. We've got about 11 minutes that's left. I've got one caller behind All right. you. You better get to the next caller. Yep. Okay, okay. Robert. Thanks very much. Love and you, have Robert. a wonderful. Bye. Have no a good problem. Monday, brother. That's why I was you there. Yep. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. And we're going to bounce over to West Virginia. Hi, who's this? This is Wyatt calling. Hey, Wyatt. How are you, brother? I'm good, man. What's up? Hi. Thanks for bouncing b- bouncing in off the Spaced Out Radio uh, chat room. Good to hear you. Well, well, thank you. Good to hear you, too. I've been wanting to talk to Skeeter and hadn't got, uh, you know, schedules where we could get, talk and what have you. And I was just sitting there listening to you guys on the Peter, and I thought, well, I just call in and see what's up. Yeah, well, go for it. You got the, you've got, uh, well, unfortunately, about seven minutes, but uh, it's all yours. (laughs) Okay, cool, man. Skeeter. Yes. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I just thought I'd call in to get a general read from you, a little bit of drift, maybe see where the path goes answer some questions, you know, the normal thing. Okay. The the first thing they're telling me to do telling me to tell you is stop arguing with your intuition. You really need to start trusting yourself a little bit more. Okay. Well, I'll have to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> they said my point exactly. Well, okay. Uh, um, I'm asking a little bit of a deep question for them right now because I want to know why it is that you've been arguing with your intuition and what it is specifically you've been arguing about. And for you, it's it's about where your faith lies. It's about where you should be going in life. Um... It's questioning the playbook about, you know, I feel like I should be here by now, but I'm I'm not. It's, um... It, it, it's like, you, you feel like you're on, on, it's like you're, you're walking up the up escalator, up the down escalator. Okay. So I'm hoping this makes sense, what they're showing me. Well, I'm at a point where I don't know which way to go, where my path leads, and so on. So this could be why the confusion. Wow, that is so crazy. Um, I, I laid out the cards. I didn't okay. like the cards, so I reshuffled the deck, and I got the exact same card back. Um, okay. it's a healing guide. 
you've really got to go in and start taking care of yourself. Um, it's opening up and learning how to speak for yourself, how to identify what you need for yourself. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm flipping all the cards for your story now. And all of them are talking about healing. And even going back and doing some ancestral healing like Elizabeth does. Where you find something that's in you. Find out where it came from and heal it going back through the generations. You're carrying a lot of old weight on you. You, okay. you collect failures and things that didn't go right and you argue with yourself in your head about how you should have handled it or how you should have done it. And those days that the weight of the world is on my shoulders. Yeah. And you refuse to give it up. Okay. You really need to go through and Let go of a lot of this stuff. Stop holding yourself to such standards that you can't even meet them. It doesn't have... And also be more willing to be less absolute and more willing to be abstract. Um, The easiest way to break that down, they're telling me for you, is don't... It doesn't always have to be black and white. It's got to be gray sometimes. And I know that's probably an uncomfortable zone for you because it's a lot easier to be, no, this is this and this is that. But when you're exploring your spiritual path, your personal path, when you're at a crossroads where you don't know where your path is, you really have to go beyond what you know and explore beyond that, getting out of the box. Um, right now, for you, the the one thing that I'm really being drawn to on these cards is support comes, through support comes great protection, assistance, and a reminder that you are never alone. And it's really hard for you to ask for help for specific things. It's kind of like you go out into the room and you go, I need help. And everyone kind of looks at you and goes, okay, you need help. Now elaborate. But you are you kind of expect people just to kind of know what you need help with without having to elaborate. Okay. So it's like carry the weight of the world on my shoulders and you say that I need a healing and I need to ask people for help. Is there anybody close by that I can't see that might be a helpful person? Like, is there any family members or what have you hanging out? They said for you, family is touch and go. Okay. Um, That you would find support there, but you really need to... I'm asking for clarification because of what they just told me versus what they're telling me now. You need to identify what you need help with first. And a lot of this is self-confidence building. It's learning to let go of things. Um, It's being able to sit down with someone who you can trust enough to say, listen, I got to get this off my chest and trust them enough not to have it come back around on you. They said that's something that you have to be very careful of in your circles. And I, I apologize if I'm wrong on that, but I'm, I'm being really pushed that way. 
Well, my circle is very small, so I understand what you're saying about being careful. Yeah. Um, you just, you, just you may look. want to look outside of your circle for assistance. Um, as, per, as per a teacher or what? Um, a uh, for a healer. You know what, guys? We've got about thirty seconds left. So, Wyatt, I want you to hold on the line, and uh, just as I say goodbye to everybody else, you can hang out, and Skeeter can do the rest of your reading just off the air here. And I want to thank everybody okay. who tuned in, and I want to thank everybody who is going to stick with Spreaker and go over to Eric Cooper on S four. And see what the boys there have to say. And let's all just keep an open mind. All right, that's it. Let's roll. And hey, 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 hey! Let's be careful out there. Far over the snow, what are those voices? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Dave's not here! Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile found sometime last week has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection.